four as the action continues right here at Belfield. Oh, we are in the primary school playoffs. And Kelvin, as you continue to see some good tennis being displayed by the junior boys, uh, much to the appreciation of the spectators here at Belfield. A nice crowd, and we know that Belfield always have a good, a decent crowd for row tennis, as you can see on your screen. It's Nathan Struitt uh, versus Kadena Critchlow. And Stuart now with a serve with his traditional hat back to front. And it's three serving to four. But John, we have some big action coming up a bit later with the bigger boys and that's the bigger girls. Yeah, Tell us a bit about that. Yes, that's correct. We have the boys, secondary boys, 11 to 14 finals coming where we see we'll see Tariko Brathwick um, he's coming up against Kenoja Belgrave uh, we also have the girls on the 16 where Kezia Blunt uh, will be coming up against Renisha Short and um, that's a big one these young ladies are the future of raw tennis and it's really good to see and uh, they like pretty much one and two and there, this will be the final matchup here between these two. We also have coming up the boys 15 to 17 category where we will see Azari Clark um, coming up against GL Graves. Uh, and in the senior boys, Shaquem Nurse comes up against Tyrese Holder. So big action. Uh, some good games to look forward to as these juniors look forward to being crowned champion of uh, the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. Yes, and we know some of these uh, players played last year in the 2023 uh, Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Tournament. And they're here again. And uh, from what we saw last night, John and Dover, there's been tremendous improvement as the National Sports Council have been training uh, many of these players across the various primary schools of Barbados. And we're really seeing the improvement here. Uh, young Stuart now with the ball in hand. And he's such a stylish player, John, uh, this Stuart. Yes, he, he's trailing, but looking to close this gap. Um, and he's one of, difference. He's one of those players that always try to hit a shot. Whether he's in difficulty or not, Interesting how Critchlow spawns the court. If you look at his stance, you see, he spawns the court and just rallies the ball. Critchlow with a slight lead. Eleven all. Serving you were talking 12, about 0. the efforts, Calvin, of uh, the, the coaches around. And we must say a special thanks to persons like Julian White. Um, he's now part of the coaching team, 12, um, the world 13, boss. Uh, he's there at the Sports Council um, sharing his, his knowledge and experience with a number of juniors in the various schools. So too is Winslow Burkett. Uh, he is a new member as well to the Sports Council team. But it was all before we had none other 13 serving 14. than Peter Moore. Uh, he was the man uh, single-handedly handling uh, quite a few juniors 14, around Barbados. Oh. I'm quite sure he welcomes the presence of these uh, this additional two um, well, coaches. Physical 15, education te 14. Uh, teachers around Barbados have been working hard as well with these students uh, outside of their regular program and one week visit from the Sports Council. So kudos to them as well as we see the developmental uh, programs. 14, serving 16. And in addition to the coaches, the recognized coaches, we have parents who are also getting involved. Um, taking 15, it that role 13, to ensure that the daughters or sons are developing as best as they can and persons like Abby Clark comes to mind and uh, 16 all but 
the 16 serving to 16 John in this first encounter between 16. Stuart and Critchlow. And it's interesting how close this game is for a third and fourth place playoff in these primary school boys. Toe to toe battle. Seventeen all. Seventeen all. Going all the way down to the wire. Smashing shot there from the youngster. Seventeen, eighteen, service change. Well played by Kadim. Eighteen all. And an equal response from Nathan Stewart. Not the power, as we saw from Kadim, but good touch. Good ball control. 18 serving 19. And Stuart could not resist the opportunity to go for more power on that occasion. 18 serving 20. First game point. serving to 20. Stuart spoiling that one. That's the first game point to Critch Low. Hitting this one uh, pretty good, and he wins this first game a 21 18. And that was an interesting game, John. I'll tell you why. Both players were playing point for point up until 17, and that's when Critchlow decided, okay, I'm heading home. Love serving one. Next on court, we have Genesis Clark versus Shani Seal. Serving two. A good exchange by both juniors. Love serving three. Love serving four. Stuart um, shows that he's an attacker for the future. Four serving one. He holds back, no punches. That's four one. So he still has some more hitting to Five do. serving one. Yeah, five serving to one now. Six serving one. Well, Krishno getting into the driver's seat here. Seven uh, serving one. And it's interesting, John, that the uh, colors for the tournament has Netball. the majority of pink in it. And we are seeing a pink ball uh, thanks to the Road Tennis Sports Plus. A new ball has been introduced to Row Tennis now, and uh, from all indications, as a matter of fact, I was one. privileged to uh, take a few of them and try them out, and they're bouncing extremely well. Seven, we played in tennis two. town uh, with these balls, and uh, they're bouncing pretty good. The youngsters two, are manipulating eight. and controlling them quite nicely. Seems like an up oh. battle. With Three, Crichlow serving, wrong. Eight. And Crichlow putting a big effort uh, by not being able to retrieve on that occasion. Four serving eight. Five serving eight. John, I'll tell you what is impressive here. You mentioned it before, but I just want to reiterate it. It's really good that had this been an A-class tournament of the seniors, you would probably still get this crowd or maybe a bit more. And it's really good to see the support of the crowd here in Belfield and Blackrock uh, for these juniors. Yes, the support is really there. It's good to see, like I said a bit earlier, parents getting involved, clubs getting involved. and. This young brigade has a, a good, some really good support in several ways. Ten, eight. Ten serving to eight. A bit of commerce there. Eleven, and advertise eight. advertise in the background. John, do you recognize how low Critchlow is keeping his body? Eight serving twelve. Recognizing the sense of gravity. He Remains extremely low for most of his shots. Well, it's 
so good, John. No, that what is that is one of finals. Look like you would think we're at the final stage, but this is the playoffs. Good work here by both players keeping the ball on the court for a very long period, well 26 over 20, ball 26 rally. ball rally, um, pleasing to the spectators. King serving 12. Young stroke beginning to get warm now. Uh, he's doing really well closing uh, this gap, just two points trailing. Payne serving 13. And John, do you think height is a factor here? as the diminutive stroke struggles with some of the angles that Critchlow is playing. Uh, maybe a height. I always wonder about the rackets more so than the height on court. Um, I truly hope that these juniors are using the appropriate racket. Uh, I think that can make a lot of difference in what they do and how they stroke the ball uh, by having a more a lighter racket. I'm not sure what they're using at this point. But I truly hope that they're using a racket that gives them the opportunity to feel the ball and have more control. Yes, and you mentioned before Winslow Burkett. He's actually in the corner of Critchlow. And Stuart has his father who has been supporting him over the years and coaching him in his 14, corner. 11. And Critchlow winning the first game, the taller of the two. 14, 13, and 12. He has a two-point lead in this one, the second game. It's a two best of three for the entire night. 15 serving 12. Uh, Stuart with his effort, he still finds it difficult to close this gap. Uh, it's important that he get his nose, if possible, ahead of Critchlow. If he's going to take us into a game number three. Mm -hmm. And his father, you can see uh, earlier, Showing him how that particular shot should have been played. But you made a good point earlier, John, in relation to the size of the racket. I'm still seeing a lot of these juniors playing with what you may consider adult rackets in terms of the size of the handle and the circumference of the centerpiece. And perhaps what some of these coaches may want to do is reduce the size of the racket so that these juniors can have a better range in terms of hitting the ball. Yes, I, that, that kind of frame, very small indeed. 14, 16, uh, they need something that can, they can work with uh, and, and not be playing with a heavy, more senior type of racket. But close score line nonetheless, we have uh, Stuart. 14, serving 17. Um, trying to stay in this one as best as he can. 14-17, uh, very Powerful good serve. serve, John. But I'll tell you what, I love Stuart's back arm. And there you go again. 16-17. Three consecutive oh, balls to the back arm of Stuart. And he was able to combat any danger in that area. 17-0. This is good work here by Stuart. Closing the gap, 17 all. And Stuart oh, is punching, John. He could not resist the opportunity that to was the given. Delight. And uh, that one brilliantly placed. Good stroke playing here by Stuart. 17, 19. And Stuart now having the lead. He takes the lead here. Looking to push this. Second game, and that is Stuart. And Stuart continues. Uh, Mark, look at his father. Yeah, Mark to the, appreci the appreciation of dad. Yeah, he's impressed. Daddy is impressed. And the crowd as well. And uh, this is very good work here by young Stuart. As I mentioned before, as Stuart is one of those little players that you have to like. So full of style, so cool as a player. And coming away with a win on this occasion. 
So we'll be playing the third and deciding game in this one. And of course, the players will switch at 10. And the reason for that is to give both players the opportunity to play on both sides of the court in the deciding game if there is an advantageous part of the court. Well, what a timely move by young Stewart, uh, being able to raise his game and get those attack shots clicking at the right time. And remember, Stewart was behind. Yes, he was trailing. And, and in the latter part of the game, he was able to kind of stand up straight as a shorter player and hit some nice cross-court shots goal. at Fast Critchlow. So game number three. We are in the playoffs of the primary school boys. Love, serving love. Our official umpire for this, this game is none other than Aaron Barker, an air class player. I'll tell you what, nice shot. Aaron One Barker serving, also heals from Belfield. This is where he plays his tennis. One oh. Two. One. And we were talking a bit earlier about the support of the junior tennis. And it's really good to see the way the, the, the senior guys, the A class players, you know, we are seeing the game being played. The juniors are on show, but it is not beneath them in any way. It's nothing that they're not keen about being part of. We're seeing some A class players coming out night after night and giving these juniors some support. Last night we were at Dover and we saw Mark Griffith, the number one. He was there. And we also saw Julian White. He was there. Some of the top players, Kim Holder, she came out and she lent some support to the junior tennis. So this is really healthy, good stuff for real tennis. Three serving four. Four. Oh. Calvin, I didn't know if you picked up that early attempt at the injection in that particular rally. It, it, it went a bit high, and Stuart said, Let me try it again. You know, this time in the back arm, he was able to execute brilliantly. I'll tell you what, a short ball from a short player. From a short an excellent player. Oh, well done by short. Four serving five. And it's good, John. Kudos to the coaches that they're not giving a whole set of instructions to these youngsters as it would be a bit burdensome at this stage. Straight, They're four. just telling them the base to keep the ball on the court. Yes, allowing the juniors to develop in several ways and enjoy the game. Uh, sometimes that's all these juniors really want, uh, to Straight, come and have fun uh, along with the competition. Six, all. Six serving seven. Seven all. Seven eight. Seven nine. Seven nine. Another close game. Seven, ten, ten. The players will switch now at ten. As this is a deciding game. Uh, we're seeing Stuart uh, holding the Seven, lead. Um, but we Seven, also saw 11. a big fight back on the part of Stuart. Cor correction, Critchlow is leading, but we saw a good fight back by Stuart in game number two. Can you pull it off in game Seven, number three? Well, 
the seventh sermon to twelve as we see Critchlow now beginning to buckle down and uh, playing uh, similar to how he was playing in the first game. Uh, perhaps well, serving eight. Perhaps uh, tauntingly saying to Stuart, "Hey, I give you a game, but I think you'll get eight. the set." I'm quite sure that young Stuart has other plans. If I can win one, I can win two. Fourteen eight. Fifteen eight. As Krishna builds his lead here, fifteen eight, and um, just six points away from taking his third place position. Fifteen of, uh, nine. The Sandy Lane Trust Easter Junior Competition. Nine serving twenty twenty four. Nine serving to 16, Stroot with ball in hand. 10 serving 16. It's 10 serving to 16, Stroot uh, trailing by 6 points. 10, 17. 7 points now. I'm sure Net that ball. he would want to uh, try to make best of his serves to Krishna. Oh, that's Ten, a ball. 18. That's a Excellent drop shot and another one. <laughs> 11 18. And Krishna has 19, moved into the drop 11. shot mode. I just taken the weight off. But here's an answer uh, from uh, Stuart. I don't need to hit drop shots, I have power shots as well. Krishna is actually smiling at that shot. Yeah, that was well. Played on that occasion by Young Stuart. And there you have it, Kadeen Critchlow winning a 21 18, a 17 21, and a 21 12 in the final game. Look at the exchanges of pleasant trees between these two uh, primary school players. Excellent tennis right here at Belfield in Black Rock. It's the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior World Tennis Tournament 2024. And of course, we have to say a special thanks to our sponsors on CIBC, Jeans Inc., Little World Tennis Sports Plus, and Athletes Foot Store are coming on board to make this event a reality making it possible as we are getting ready for the girls on the 16 third and fourth place playoff so it's genesis clark and sanai seal and if you want a distinction between the two players Shanae is in the black shoes while well, Genesis is wearing the bright orange shoes tonight. We have Miss Genesis Clark to my right. Give her a round of applause, please. And Miss Shanae Steele on my left. Give her a round of applause. Genesis won the toss and she's elected to serve. Shanae's comfortable with her sight. Dead ball. Love, serving love. Love, serving one. Love, John serving Mercy two. And a left hander, South Paul, and Genesis Clark. She's coming up against Shanai Seal. Love, serving and three. Last night at Dover, we saw a much improved Seal. Love serving for Playing some really good tennis. Yeah, she fought well. She fought well against Renisha Stewart at Dover. And that will certainly Play give her a confidence, confidence boost um, coming to this playoff here this evening.
Five, love. Six, love. And I remember uh, speaking to Seal's parents some two years ago and Seven, he love. had a very nervous looking Seal. But now she's here looking more confident about her tennis. Uh, she's accustomed to the crowd now and to the scoreman, etc. And she's playing some confident shots. Seven, one. As a matter of fact, she's leading with six. Seven, two. I think that she's a bit surprised at that particular serve <laughs> being wide. And I'll tell you that Seal is playing a very uh, calculating, intelligent game as she serves in the back arm of Clark, uh, trying to garner some points, imagining that it's her weaker area. Five, serving seven. Well, we are seeing some good power serves here by Clark. Five, serving eight. Five, serving nine. Nine, serving six. Alcia will serve, having a three-point lead. Uh, relatively good work by Clark in closing the gap. Ten, six. And I'll tell you, John, Clark is making a slight break because of some interesting um, rain flies as they make the ball here. And a couple <laughs> were over our head earlier. Um, you may not be able to see them uh, from the camera screen, but they're definitely yeah. well, an interesting six. sight here in Belfield. We'll see how these players battle 13, six. under these conditions. Belfield, an area known not only for raw tennis, but even cricket, a number of sporting 13. activities played here. And over the years, we have seen quite a few top players coming from Belfield, persons like this in Julian White. Um, he would have started his tennis in early days right here at Belfield. And Calvin, what gets me about Belfield is the artistic work um, on, here at Belfield. Um, it, they ball, they ball. Quality work, but uh, but they were one of the most interesting individuals you could ever meet, the late Terence Franklin. Uh, he was a very inspirational individual right here at Belfield. Uh, not only was he a player, but a big supporter to many over the years. Seven. 14. So it's really challenging to come. You really can't come to Belfield Eight, and uh, Terry not enters your thoughts. I'll tell you what, uh, John, as soon as I got here this evening and I saw the painting on the wall, Eight, I remember uh, Terry, real name Terence Franklin, and I remember the evening when he fell ill and died. Uh, it was a tremendous shock in the Belfield community and in the road tennis community across Barbados. Such a gentleman, John. As a matter of fact, Eight, he would sit 15. closer to us and uh, even have some interesting road tennis Nine, discussions 15. with us after condolences again to his family. 15, 10, service change. 15, now serving to 10 with Shani Seal, with ball in hand, serving. 16, 10. Genesis Clark, 16, no serving to 10. Yeah, they're still the very much game. in the driver's seat. 16, 11. 17, 11. Very good shot by Seal. 
Uh, she's already uh, in a pretty good position here, Calvin. A uh, shot like that sends a message to her opponent. Uh, I'm here uh, to, to for victory this evening uh, and not to play. Certainly. Eleven twenty. Twelve twenty. Thirteen twenty. Thirteen twenty. Very good shot there from Clark, uh, dissecting the court with her back arm. No answer at all uh, from Seal. And uh, as she moves forward with her points, 14, 20. it's now 14 serving to 20. 20, 15 service change. 20 serving to 15. And Shani Seal is yet to close the and game, and that's it. 21 15. Next on court, we have Zan Moore versus Shalon Howell. Miss Seal will be serving. Love, serving love. One, love. One, all. Two, one. Four. One no serving to four. Shani Seal been in the Two, first game a 21 15. And she trails in this second game. Two serving five was the win. secondary school girls competition right here in the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Road Tennis Two, Competition 2024. As the crowd continues to build right here at Belfield, looking forward to the finals. We're presently in the playoffs uh, with the finals coming up momentarily. Seven serving three. Eight serving three. Three. What a powerful shot there from Seal. Uh, she pierces uh, the court with a smashing form turn on Clark. There's no answer. Three. 10 no serving to 3. Seal uh, looking quite dominant in this second game after winning the first game 21-15. Ten serving four. Ten no serving to four.
Five serving ten. Five no serving to ten. Genesis Clark with ball in hand to serve to Shani Seal. And a very Six nice, interesting and low back arm there from Clark. Uh, the southpaw. She's serving at an angle now. Six serving 11. It's good to see, Calvin, that she's given serious thought about how she will use her serve. It may not have come off on that occasion, but it tells me that she's a, a future player who will be thinking and using and appreciating what a serve can actually bring to your game. Seven serving 12. Recognizing that these young ladies are still in that mental 13, stage. Seven, the tennis 17. is growing, uh, maybe not at the speed of the boys, but they're developing and it's good to see that she's on court and looking at 13, different seven. strategic ways. Uh, of, of making things happen positively you're absolutely correct still using her height and reaching for some of those balls I know if it were her coach I would be telling her to maybe just lap and go across lap her feet and go across in an effort to get closer to the ball 39. but she's being caught interestingly by Maudlin Blunt, who has been doing some coaching work recently. 14, and uh, Maudlin Blunt is one of those high ranking players in Barbados as well. Uh, so she's in a good position to be a coach as she understands 15, the game nine. well. She hails from the beautiful island of St. Vincent and started playing the sport in 2017. 10, serving 15, to the point where she's an A class player and coach. Kudos to her. Uh, she was actually the finalist in the Barbados Rural Tennis Open 2023. Uh, uh, she was the mo most valued player in a village camp competition 11, in 2023. 15, uh, so we're talking about oh, well, a 11, Blunt 16. who has been going to different levels of her game and uh, certainly in a coaching capacity. Uh, she would be looking forward to sharing a lot of what she would have acquired over the years. So it's good to see that she's 12, prepared this evening to sit in the coach's chair and uh, lend some 13, assistance to young Seal. So following 13, 16. the playoffs we have coming up this evening, the finals where we'll see the secondary school boys age 11 to 14. What a rally uh, to the delight of the crowd. And Clark sending Seal all the way back, 16, almost 14. touching uh, the lines personnel. And Seal going to Maudlin Blunt for some instructions after that long rally. As Clark speaks to Rommel Brom Griffith for some instructions and getting some water. So as an action, as we look 14. forward to the finals this evening. Uh, the secondary school boys, 11 to 14, is coming up. Where we'll see Kanoja Belgrave versus Tariko Brathwit. The secondary 17, school girls, 11 to 16. We will see Kezia Blunt uh, coming up against Renisha Stewart. And in the secondary school boys, 15 to 17 group, Azari Clark plays Gian Graves and to bring the curtain down on uh, this event here this evening the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior 14. Tournament uh, the senior boys will see Shaquem Nurse uh, battle with Tyrese Holder 14. Seal very much in the driver's seat at 18 serving to 14 uh, just three points away from claiming position 18, number 15. three of this two best in three event having won the first game 15, 21 15. 21 15 match to shiny seal with these two young ladies, a round of applause. With 
Shani Seal winning the first game 21-15 and the second game 21-15 as well in the third and fourth place playoff. And all the action right here at well, Belfield right will not happen not without our sponsors. So we have to thank Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, CABC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc., and Road Tennis Sports Plus. Calling Shalom Howell twice. Calling Shalom Howell three times. Game goes to Zion Moore. Well, Zion Moore winning that one quite easily by default as Howell did not turn up. So the games are running quite nicely here at Belfield and Black Rock. And remember, uh, we will be live on CBC Channel 8 from 7.30. So that's another medium. And uh, John, we are fortunate that the weather is in our favor tonight. As we are seeing our, our producer, Mr. Green, working extremely hard and making sure that everything is on, up and running. And now it's the stylish Raheem Nurse, the younger brother of Shaquem Nurse. And he'll be playing Suave Clark. Remember last night, John, at Dover, uh, that was uh, some exciting tennis from these teenagers and I'm telling you uh, folks at home uh, this game is going to be a very exciting and exhilarating game as both players have a wide cadre of shots yes yeah, very good conditions just 27 degrees on the outside um, no more threat there's no more threat of rain and let's hope that the evening con and the weather continues in the vein. On court, we're getting ready for the playoff of the boys 15 to 17 age group. The Southpaw uh, is Suave Clark and he's up against Raheem Nurse. Uh, Raheem Nurse, uh, he serving. won this Love. event over the last two years. He was, came into this event as the defending champion Love and uh, went down to Jail, Jail Graves Love in a serving. very <laughs> thrilling and exciting three-setter, three-match last night. So he's playing in the playoff, still very much One known for his two. ability as a top junior player. And I'm quite sure uh, that Nurse has plans this evening of still oh. staying uh, in the top more so than the bottom. Sauve Clark three. is known for his ability to attack as a left-hander. He plays the ball with great power when opportunity is presented. Three. Uh, Raheem oh. Nurse is not really known for that kind of power but his placement helps him along the way. Four serving three. Four serving four balls away. Neres was very disgusted and five. having lost in the semi-final and I'm quite sure he would not want to repeat in the playoff here this evening to be on the losing end. Five, all. In the Five, semi-finals, Suave Clark, uh, he lost to his younger brother in Azari Clark. Six, all. Six, serving seven. So as we look forward to the oh, finals the of the boys 15 to 17 Seven category this all. evening, there will be a new champion um, in that category. Will it be Jai, right, GL Graves? Eight, or will we see Azari Clark who won 
the June event a bit a couple of months ago. Repeating. Nine serving seven. The junior events are known to be Ten points seven. tallied and seedings seven. Seven. resulting from uh, the performances of the juniors Twelve over seven. a period of time. Uh, Raheem Nurse would have entered Eight this competition as the number one. Serving 12. Raheem Nurse Nine, serving 12. from the Bush Hall area but plays quite a bit of his tennis in the sauna. Uh, whereas his opponent in Suave is a member of the Elite Road Nine, Tennis Team. 13. Serving 13. The 10 serving to 13 as Nurse attempts a power shot, but it was just off the court. Oh, what a stroke! What a play uh, by Clark showing that he has a wide range of shots as well. Good inside out, well placed by Clark. So it's the Julian Road Tennis Team. My name is Kelvin Bruce Willis Scott, and with me, my co-commentator John John Wick Chandler. As we are here in the 15, Sandy Lane a Charitable Trust Easter Road Tennis Tournament 2024. 16, 13. Thirteen, seventeen, service change. Fourteen, seventeen. Fourteen, seventeen. Fourteen, seventeen, eighteen. Special good evening to uh, the diaspora who continues to play this game in New York, Canada, and other places. 14, 19. Keeping this indigenous sport alive, John. Yes, it's really good to see the road tennis continues to move in a big way. 14, this is the second 20, junior event for 2024, right which is really good. Uh, kudos and well done uh, by uh, the organizers and Good work here 20, 15. by the Barbados Road Tennis Association, uh, led by uh, Frederick Blunt, 20, ensuring that the juniors' events are on the cards. Yes. So this is the second event. We are into in the month of April, and this is the second years. event for the juniors. Yes, and this particular game that you just saw is the 15 to 18 category or rather 15 to 17 category with Rahim Nurse winning that first game and now we are in to the second game Rahim Nurse will serve love serving love oh ball one love Two, love. And both players remaining uh, very low to the ground and uh, beginning to punch as they get a bit more comfortable in terms of their stroke play. Four, love. A nurse in the love area of five. ascendancy. Love serving to five after he won the first game 21-18.
And a special good evening to Trevor Eiffel, One, five. who has worked extremely hard in making sure that the grounds are prepared at this Belfield facility. Two, five. A two now serving to five. As these tall players, John, get extremely low and exchange some Three, good shots. Five. Three now serving to five as we can hear the screams of Abby Clark, a father of Swavia Clark, uh, sitting as coach in his bench, in his corner rather. And of course, we're going to see the older brother of Rahim Nurse, Shaquem Nurse, in the finals of the seniors a bit later. Yes, of course, seven now serving to three uh, as Rahim. Nurse keeps his nose in front and having won uh, the first game, uh, Nurse will be looking once possible uh, Eight, to four. double here this evening and take the third position. Eight, serving to four. Again, as the crowd Eight, continues four. to build right here at Belfield. Eight, five. The spectator is trying to get the best view points he possibly can. Seven, eight, service And John, this left-hander, I know you are big fan of the soft pause is putting some interesting pressure now on nurse seven, yes. seven serving to eight keeping the ball center court um, to his opponent's back arm and getting his just rewards seven nine Seven, ten. Seven, oh, seven to ten. Seems like the commentator curse as a nurse begins to pull away as soon seven, as we thought that seven. Clark was going to close that gap. Seven, twelve. Seven, oh, seven to twelve. It's going to be a bit difficult here for Clark to pull back after trailing at five points. Seven. So make that six. Yes, the gap opens up yes, and the pressure being Indian. applied here by Nurse. It's going to take a very big effort on Clark's part if he's going to take game at number two. Uh, we saw it last night at Dover with GL Graves showing that he had what was required um, to 13, push seven. that semi-final into a third and he walked away um, being a finalist here this evening. So we look forward to seeing GL Graves, another left hander, uh, Calvin. Oh, what a play. What a play on that occasion by Nurse. Great power, placement to perfection. A shot similar to his older brother, Shaquem, but with a bit more angle. Some very good power. And young Clark had no answer to that shot. 15, eight. Some eight. new bright pink balls, compliments of Row Tennis Sports Plus, a new player in town in terms of uh, Row Tennis equipment. 16, and uh, they have sponsored this tournament. So you're seeing this pink ball being uh, played and introduced to tournament tennis for the first time. 9, 16. 9-0-7-16. And John, Nine, we had a very 17. interesting conversation with uh, Suave 11, last night 17. and one or two fans where we recognize that he's a very talented player, lots of shots as a left-hander, but somehow 17. he goes into that mental rut 
and you can see that 18, psychologically he beats himself on a regular basis now you being a left-hander you being a very yeah, good road tennis 13. player what advice would you give to a young person who seems to be experiencing uh, those butterflies in tournaments a tournament is, 19, tennis in general is not only a matter of tournaments a sports in general is a combination of two things is the ability to have the skill set and the mental and it's important that as much as you're trying to develop that skill set the mental comes along with it 20, 14. so Raheem Nerf just one point away from clinching third position here this evening 15 20 service change 15 serving to 20 Raheem Nurse winning the first game 21 18 and just on the eve of winning this one with Clark with ball in hand 16 serving to 20 oh what a play what a shot uh, you can see his father in camera view earlier with that famous whistle 18, and this game is a 18, bit more interesting 20. a fight back is on oh, oh. Fight back is on here and, oh, and i wonder if suave heard us from over here he's a very good player he has all of these shots and he's now exploding look at this this is a excellent work here. A 20 serving to 20, a John. Playoff. This is excellent work by Clark. Serving from 15, 20. And being able to win all five of his serves. In the sport of rural tennis, a player has five serves. And this is really good work here by Clark. Can he push us on this match into game number three? The work is not over. Uh, this is six consecutive points here by Clark looking for the seventh oh, again good composure good exchange by both players in the end nurse stealing that one away from Clark and it's really hard to call, John. Uh, both players Nurse exhibiting would have seen some this kind of excitement and drama just 24 hours ago. Uh, can he turn it around this time and come out the victor here in game number two? Well, what is interesting is that Nurse won the first game last night and ended up losing the set. He won the first one here. Clark Bunk served to the forearm. And that's well done by Suave Clark. We will have guys buckle up, get your seat belts on. We are going into game number three here at Belfield. As Suave Clark says, it is not over. Uh, we have more action coming your way. One apiece as we look forward to the senior boys as well coming up. Where Mosai Williams will take on Devontae Lane in the playoffs but this is very good work your thoughts on the, the performance there of game number two Calvin uh, by Clark well it's interesting that in the middle of the game we were discussing the ability of Clark and we're not sure if he heard us but he started to play the tennis that we know that he can play and eventually winning that game 23-21 now uh, this game is deemed to be a relatively close game One, as both players exchange shots i'm sure game number three will be seeing a Two. more One. confident clark uh, taking that second game and nurse may be wondering is this my season is this my this is this is my season Three. for some strange oh. stuff um 24 hours ago he was in the position of a sentency looking good for the finals oh, the and man. he lost to joe graves um, here he was Three. again in game number Three. one looking really good 
and again a similar fate so far. Nurse needs to dig deep here. Exchanges galore as both players play some interesting backcourt tennis, uh, forcing the other person to reconsider stepping into the court. And that's good, good move by Four, both six. players. Uh, the backcourt tennis keeps your opponent Four, from having the opportunity to step into the court and, and prunks on you. So, this is really good, clever tennis uh, being played by Nurse and Clark. Four, eight. Four seven to eight. Clark with ball in hand. And he needs to make better now of his serves. Five, eight. A five seven to eight. And he would want perhaps serves to change at eight seven. But to keep him close in this third and deciding game. Six, eight. Nine, serving six. Clark going for a bit much on that last choke. Um, serves change at nine, serving to six. Ten, six. Uh, ten, ten will serve. To six. You may see both players uh, taking a turn on the court, and this happens to be the rule in terms of road tennis for the third and deciding game if it reaches that to give advantage to both players but Neris was able to get a mini break uh, one three out of five of his opponent serves uh, he's one for one on his serve so far that's a good Seven. shot along the line Really showing a command over this here and over Rahim Nurse in that particular rally. Yes. 21 by 8. with the serve. Nine, Very seven, interesting and boxy serve to the back arm of Clark. He's trying almost everything to garner some points here. Nine, As he won the first game at 21 18, lost the second one 21 23. Nine, that was a nail biting close game, and now we are into the third game. Swabe trailing uh, four points behind Nurse. Nine, 14. position of Nine, the 15, cheer umpire 15, right 15, now, Aaron. Raheem Nurse showing why he is a defending champion. He won two 15, years 9, in a row and he's showing tonight even though he's playing here at the playoffs, he's a champion. He's playing tennis like a champion and he's leading now 16, 7 to 9. Nurse Aaron able Parker's to... Job, extremely difficult. <laughs> As I saw one of those balls just 16, nipping uh, that two inch back lane. 17, 9. 
It's good, John, that coming up we will have the opportunity to interview uh, one of the individuals okay. who's responsible for some software that's going to make uh, road tennis a bit easier in terms of adjudicating uh, the balls that are in and out and of course the analytics and stats associated with the sport but it's a big gap here with that nurse now have on Clark yes nurse very much in the driver's seat very much in the driver's seat here well positioned to claim game number three. Ten twenty. Match point to Raheem Nurse. Ten servant to twenty. Calvin will also have the opportunity to speak this evening to the president of the Barbers Royal Tennis Association as well. Uh, so we have some interviews uh, coming our way this evening and for our viewers 11 20. so there you have it Rahim Nurse winning the first game 21 18. Uh, the second game 21 23. And winning the third and final game 21 11. And all the action. Being brought to you thanks to our sponsors in Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, CABC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc., and Road Tennis Sports Plus. Coming up, we have the senior boys playoff where we see Mosai Williams coming up against Devonte Lane. And then we'll move into the finals where we have the action all lined up for you we will see the finals of the senior boys the secondary boys age 11 to 14 where Kenosha Belgrave comes up against Tariko Brathwit the secondary girls 11 to 16, Kinesia Blunt uh, she comes up against Renisha Stewart and the secondary boys, 15 to 17, we have Azari Clark. Uh, he be coming up against GL Graves. And the senior boys will bring the curtain down on the events this evening as Shaquem Nurse takes on Tyrese Holder. Calling Jakira Archer and so we'll have it to court the final time. This is the finals of the Chandelier Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Tournament. Please go to the course official. Up next will be Devontae Gill and Naya Busher. Sponsors the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust. We have Road Tennis Sports Plus, the provider of rackets, balls, nets, and you can get them at rtsbarbados at gmail.com. Jakira Archer won the toss and she has decided to serve. And Sarah will pick the side. 
We are ready, all officials in place. We are ready, coaches be seated. No movement during play. Level. Dead ball. Love serving to one servant to love. Dead ball, one all. One servant to one. Dead ball, two servant to one. Two servant to two. Three servant to two. Service change to Howell. Three all. So on court we have Saraya Howell. And she's playing Jakira Archer. Both players with head ties. This is the primary Five. school division. Three. Uh, five uh, serving to three. Six, three. Archer with ball in hand. Pink head tie. Six serving to three. Seven, three. three six. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Four serving to six. So both players play their tennis in the Pineland Road Tennis Academy. And at this time, I would like to say a special good evening and kudos to Rommel Brom Griffith, the Vice President of the Barbados Road Tennis Association. And he has been doing tremendous things over there in the Pine and making sure that these young ones learn the game of road tennis. They're quite familiar with playing each other. I know at this primary school level, six, seven to seven. it's now six serving to seven. So a relatively close game. Howell with a nice bouncing serve seven. there, <laughs> set to court. Well, Howell would have six advanced to the finals, to defeating uh, Shane Miller Stewart, 21-5, 21-12. And Archer advanced to the finals, having defeated Michaela Barrow, 21-9, 21-4. So again, this is a primary school girls finals. Looking to be crowned the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Champion for 2024. And Howell just standing up in the middle of the court and returning the balls. So effortlessly. But it's 11 serving to 8. The young archer. Dead ball. Nine serve to eleven. Service change to Arthur. That serve is now Howell with ball in hand. Nine serve to twelve. Dead ball. Ten serve to twelve. It's a two best and three. And that's how these games will be playing tonight. And Remember, for those of you locked on, if one opponent wins the first game and the second opponent wins the second, you would have to play a third and deciding game that will switch sides of the court at 10. 11 30. Thirteen, seven to twelve. Service at home. 
And of course, we want to mention our sponsors. The main sponsor, Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, CIBC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc. And last but not least, Road Tennis Sports Plus. Thirteen fourteen. Thirteen seven to fourteen, John. And this is the first finals in the 13, primary 17. school girls. And it seems to be a close one. Yes, it is. Uh, both players from uh, the Pine area, they're custom playing each other. Uh, so they're rather comfortable. Oh, that's a 13, wonderful 15. shot. Beautiful shot. Hobble standing tall. In stature and in terms of shot selection. 14 16, how will trail it by two points? 17 14. 18 now serving to 14. Archer with pink head tie and pink shoes, John. Yes, color coding brilliantly uh, with the colors of the event. We were seeing quite a bit of pink in Barbados just last month when we had the Sandy Lane Gold Cup, uh, which ran at the Garrison Savannah. Uh, pink was the color at that, on that occasion as well. Eighteen sixteen. Eighteen a servant to sixteen. Somehow you may have a bit of confusion in terms of the score card 19, on your screen. To it's actually Archer with ball in hand. Seventeen, nineteen. Seventeen, now serving to nineteen. Seventeen, twenty. Game point coming up for Archer. Seventeen, serving to nineteen. Game goes to Archer. Twenty-one, seventeen. Game want to take this opportunity to welcome. Her Excellency Komoko Fukushima, the Ambassador of Japan to Barbados. Give her a warm round of applause. Welcome to the Delphi World Tennis Sports. Okay, let's continue with the game. We have game two in this day, primary school girls finals. Game number one going to Jakara Archer. Now we have game number two. Level. One serving to love. Two serving to love. Serving to four, service change. Two, serving to four. Dead ball. Two, serving to five. Two, 
serve, let's just see. Two, serve it to seven. Two, eight, serve it to two. Service change to Soraya. Eight, three. Nine, three. Nine, seven to four. Ten, seven to four. Four, seven to eleven, service change. I'm serving to 11. Five serving to 12. Dead ball and five 13. Good evening and welcome to the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Competition 2024. We're here at Bellfield Road Tennis Facility bringing you all the action this evening. I am John, John Vic Chandler of the g Lane Road Tennis Team along with my co-commentator Kelvin Bruce Willis Scott. Good evening Kelvin. Good evening John, good evening to all the viewers. We are live here in the action in Black Rock and as you can see on court is a Jakira Archer and she's playing against Sarah Hubble with Archer with a pink head tie and pink shoes and of course Hubble with the Barbadian flag uh, somewhat the same colors as the courts here in Belfield Blackrock stand by as we bring you the action live Archer winning the first game, 21-16, and now it's Howell serving at 10 to Archer, 14. It's a two best in three event. Finals. 11 serving to 14. An event that started with some 99 participants. This evening is finals grand final evening here at Belfield we are down to the final 12 uh, on court we have two out of the 12 um, in the finals and still to come we have some more finals actions for you we have uh, the secondary school boys 11 to 14 where we'll see Kenosha Belgrave coming up against Tariko Brathwit in the secondary girls 11 to 16 we will see Kezia Blunt coming up against ball, Renisha Stewart. In the boys' secondary, 15 to 16, 17, we will see Azari Clark uh, versus GL Graves. And to bring the curtain down on this 2024 event, uh, we will see the senior boys, age 18 to 21, with Shaquem Nurse coming up against Tyrese Holder. 17 dead ball away, 17 serving to 15. We're in the third running of uh, the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament. We started in 2022. 20, nice shot there from Howell. Uh, Buckarm drag uh, pass Archer. Dead ball. 17 all. 17 all. This is the second game, as mentioned before, with Archer winning the first one at 21 16. And now it's 17 serving to 18. Very close game indeed. 17 serving to 19. Uh, by these young talents, both players 
playing their tennis in the Pineland area. Seventeen seven to twenty game point coming up for Soraya Howell. Game goes to Soraya Howell. We have a third game in this set. I will take game at number two. 21 17. A refreshment moment for the players as the crowd continues to build right here at Belfield. And this is quite interesting as you may see on the screen. Romel Brom Griffith, Vice President of the Barbados Royal Tennis Association. Uh, what is interesting is that he is the coach over there in the pine so he is somewhat responsible for both players uh, primary school level very close encounter here this evening oh that's a good shot good defensive play And Archer being mobile and getting around the court, making sure that she reaches all of those balls from Howell. Howell being the taller of the two. And this is some excellent tennis here from these primary school girls. So again, Archer in the pink head tie with Two, some matching pink four. shoes and Howell with her Barbadian flag on, representing 246, John. Yes, the future of tennis, the ladies' side of tennis is looking three, very three, bright four. indeed. Good to see these young ladies uh, getting involved in our indigenous sport of world tennis. Uh, Three, almost 100 years of, of tennis. We, and we see the indigenous sport uh, continues to move Three, seven, six, around the globe. Oh, we are seeing the sport uh, in Canada. We are seeing it, the sport in New York, Three, seven, in the six. Caribbean, islands of Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, all coming on six, board and seven, getting involved seven, in the sport of rural tennis. Six seven to five. Six seven to five now. Well, that's oh, a that's nice shot through the back arm seven, there of Archer. Yes, well played by Hobble. Get ball. Eight seven to five. Nine, seven, two, it's interesting that Archer won the first game 21-16 and Let's Howell go. winning the second five, game 21-17 uh, but somehow Howell is ascending quite nicely in the third game and you may see the players switching as we mentioned before uh, that's to give the advantage or disadvantage to both players 5-7-10 Archer with the serve. Five it's now seven, five two, serving seven. to 11. As Howell builds a bigger lead, which can certainly create a bit more pressure on, on her opponent. A special thanks again to the Sandalian Charitable Trust in providing this Easter Road Tennis ball. Tournament 2024. And somehow Howell John uh, taking a big lead here seven, in seven, this seven. third and deciding game. A very good crowd on hand uh, to follow this indigenous sport of road tennis. We're here in Belfield, St. Michael, not far away 13, from the capital seven, in Bridgetown. Just about five minutes drive, that much. 
uh, what is all happening here this evening is grand finale it's finals evening and we're bringing you all uh, the action uh, again on court uh, we are seeing uh, the, the finals uh, of the primary school girls and this is the first finals but we have uh, some more interesting matches coming up and i'm sure you are eagerly anticipating uh, some of these matches 14 now serving to 8 and this gap here is getting a bit closer and I'm sure that Archer 10 serving to 15 service at home So Howell still trailing by five points. Get that six. Oh, what a shot! And that's a shot of class. Eleven serving to seventeen. Eleven serving to eighteen. Think eighteen that serving to twelve. Our baller judged away. Eighteen twelve. Nineteen serving to twelve. Nineteen servant to thirteen. Oh, the future of the, the future of world tennis. I'm sure uh, as the ladies watch and follow the youth on the move. Ball is in. Twenty fourteen. Seventh game point and max to Jakeva Archer twenty fourteen. So Archer just one point away. Fifteen serving to twenty. Service change back to Holland. To That's a good serve by Hubble. Way to her opponent's forearm. To yet again. So a slight correction uh, coming to the commentary team. Hubble. Oh, what a way to bring in the pink. And clinch a victory. Well done by Archer. A good power shot through the forearm. Uh, much to the appreciation of uh, uh, the crowd here, given uh, this, these juniors the support they certainly need as the world tennis continues to move from one level to another. Um, the focus being this evening the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. It's a 30 year running. Uh, it's good to see the juniors game they're growing Kelvin we are seeing these juniors going from strength to strength each year certainly and we have to give kudos to the coaches and physical education teachers across Barbados as they work extremely hard in ensuring uh, that this sport of road tennis continues to be alive and well as we see okay, now, lots of improvements uh, from uh, the players. Let's go, let's go. And he has decided to serve. And Devontae will pick the side. Um, Carol, just pick the net. All officials in place. Coaches, we are ready to go.
Okay, we are ready to go. Love serving love. Dead ball. One serving to love. Two serving to love. Dead ball. Three serving to love. So as action continues right here, the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Eastern Junior to Tournament, one. we are into the finals of the Premier School Boys, where we have uh, Neil Bushel coming up against Devontae Gill. One serving to four service change. Dead ball, one serving to five. Dead ball, two serving to five. Bushel has a relatively okay Three lead for starters. Off to, uh, to a relatively good start here. Three five with Gill trailing. Dead ball, three serving to six. Six serving to four. Dead ball, seven, serving to four. Gill, the bigger of the two. Um, has the taller the structure. <laughs> as well. The bigger, tall. He, he. Seven, five, ball of it. Bush a lot smaller in stature. Uh, but seven, seem to be big and up for the task this evening. Well, both boys ready for the 11 plus. Dead ball. And... Eight. Serve it to six. Bushel. The ball, the services at Bushel. Uh, dropping an interesting uh, short ball there for Gill. And even though he's a tall two, lad, nine. he wasn't able to get that short ball. Seven, nine. Seven now serving to nine. Dead ball. Seven, ten. Gill beginning to unleash some shots. You can see the comfort in his form. Oh, he oh. attempts the short Eight, drop ten. ball. Yeah, but sure, going for that drop shot on that occasion, uh, not getting the results he really went for. Um, even score. Ten all. Even score at 10 all. This is good work here by Gill. I'm closing the gap. Score, ten, ten. But she will serve. You can see Gill beginning to move a bit more now. 11, As his comfort ten. level grows. And I'm sure that they are both getting a bit warm as well. After a relatively slow 11 start. All. 11 serving 11. Dead ball. 12 serving to 11. A 12 serving to 11. We're here in Belfield and Blackrock. And this is the final of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Competition 2024. Oh, that's a very good shot by Butchell. 13-11. A ball that gave him a favorable bounce, and he was able to put that one away. 12, serve it to 13, uh, looking serve for the drop shot on that occasion, uh, without success. 13-0. Butchell advanced to the finals, having defeated Kadeem Critchlow, 21-16, 21-12. And on the, whilst his opponent, uh, Devontae Dead Gill, ball. Uh, he advanced uh, to the finals, defeating Nathan Stewart, 21-5, uh, 21-13. 15, serving to 14, ball away on the sideline. 15, serving to 14, Gill with ball in hand. 15, all. And now it's Bushel with the serve. 15, all. 16-15. Oh, so this is the 15, second final. Oh. This is the primary school boys. But you being a bit cheeky, I'm changing the serve uh, on that occasion to his demise. 
uh, for the entire night as Amada Fat attempting uh, three short balls earlier. And he is being coached by the uh, president of the Elite Road Tennis Academy. Oh, what a play. 16, 16. Oh, well done uh, by Butchell. I, I was about to share with you that his backarm looks rather solid as a young player. He looks very comfortable 16, with the backarm stroke opposed to the forearm. And that drop shot 16, was confirmation. 19. And he goes over to Francisco Lewis, uh, the coach and the president of the Elite Road Tennis Academy, as he gives him some words of encouragement. And I'm sure some advice as well. 16, 7 to 20. Game point coming up. Jake Ball. Please wait on the score and the announcement. 16, 7 to 20. Gil's Game trying point. a fast serve there. 17, 7 to 20. Game point again for Bushel. Dead ball. 18, 7 to 20, game point once again. We saw some comebacks 18, in recent times in this junior event. We'll be witnessing a comeback here this evening by Gill. Oh, Gil not to be. And uh, Niall Bushel taking uh, game number one at 21 18. Uh, we're in the finals of the primary school boys. Please record the scores, 21-18. Thank you. We're and two. we are into game number two. Niall Bushel winning the first one, 21-18. And Gil having a sip of water uh, from his coach, Winslow Burkett. Love serving love. One seven to nine. I'll tell you this young man Gill has a very seven, interesting seven. power serve sent to court oh, three, he moves seven, it well and, and now it's power. three servant to love it's working for him and that's a very smart strategy really showing ball, three, intelligent one. selections in terms of his serves and somehow committing the cardinal sin in row tennis and serving out the last two. Yes, but going for more than was required. Uh, but he seems to be a player who is pretty comfortable that he can serve and create, uh, make something happen. Um, not working for him, but nonetheless, he was able to hold on to his serves. He had a 3 2 advantage here, one point advantage against Bushel. With score now two, serving to three. Two, serving to four. And it's interesting to see Bushell's forearm action, similar to Shabir Griffith. Look at the body mechanics as he positions himself just behind the ball. And there you go, to strike it. Unfortunately, that one into the net. But he has some good hand action there and hand and eye coordination as a primary school student. Three, seven to five. Bushel, a serving, three to five after winning the first game, 21 18. Oh, that would have been a good a placement. But it's outside and now it's four serving to five. Yes, good move by Gil. Shows you again. He's thinking and uh, using any means he can uh, to secure the point. Dead ball, five serving to five. Serving oh, again, that one just going beyond the line. Six serving to five. Six serving to five. Gil with another Dead power ball. serve. Yeah, a bit and too power too quick. Bushel oh, being extremely smart, <laughs> raising his hand, signaling his intention to wait on the serve. Seven, seven to five. But still, Gill <laughs> wins the point. And I'll tell you, John, this is good to see uh, these seven, kids seven, at this six. age having a power serve. A serve can really put you back in the game in any form of tennis. Oh, 
well played. A good exchange by both players. And Gill closing well, taking that point. The score now 8 to 6. And Gill beginning to be a bit more mobile in his approach. That is an intelligent shot. Short, soft, and sweet, just behind the net yes, from yes. Bushill. Well placed. Well played. And of course, we are graced by the Minister Sport. And a community empowerment, the Honorable Charles Griffith. He's here. And we'll be having a discussion with him a bit later tonight. Butchell, Butchell open up a lead here, three point lead now, 9-12. And Gill continues to stay close, striking the range. Ooh. And what a shot by Butchell. Again, much to the appreciation of the crowd here. He shows that he's a player with lots of variation at that very young age. And wants to be a master of the injection, the drop shot. Uh, we call it the injection in the dead sport ball. of road tennis. Dead ball, dead ball. Here. 14 serving to 11. 15 serving to 11. Uh, 15 now serving to 11. As we bring you this action live from Belfield in uh, Black Rock. It's all about the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust no Easter Junior between, so Road between, Tennis Tournament no 2024. To no water breaks between serves. And as we can hear uh, the yeah, voice of Mr. Craigwell, the cheer umpire, as he reads out the rules, past president of the Barbados Road Tennis Association. And you can hear the uh, cheers from the crowd. As Bushel presses on, he's in a position of ascendancy here. Uh, just four points away from being crowned champion of the Premier School Boys of 2024. And this is the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament in 2024. Both players taking a water break. In the sport of players game of road court. tennis, you have a 15 minute, 15 second break. 15 second break for towel or water break. And as we mentioned before, uh, two of Barbados' best coaches in Francisco Lewis and Winslow Burkett. 14, seven to seven. Lewis in the corner of Bushill and Winslow Burkett in the corner of Gill. 15, seven to 17. Another power 15, serve there. Uh, from Gill. And the score now 16 17. Dead ball. This is the Sandy Lane Charitable ball. Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. 18 7 to 17. Service change. Players to court. So Butchell pretty much in the driver's seat 18, here. 17. Uh, correction. Uh, he's eight, does one, does one point. And this is really good work 18, here by 17. Gill, uh, who was able to close that gap. 
And Gil is fighting to take this into a game number three. Uh, his opponent, Ed Butchell. Like a little bit flustered here in game number two. And Gil Butchell under pressure, Kelvin. Still finding shots at this late stage of the game. Showing lots this of confidence. Is good to have this level of confidence so late in the game. 2019. 20 now serving. Or rather 1920. Good Okay. Mr. Aaron Barker. And there you and have Mr. it. And Tyrese, and Niall Bushell Bradley. emerging as the winner in uh, the primary school segment of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Tournament 2024. Yes, your scores of 21 18, 21 19. Uh, much to the delight of his fans here at Belfield. And this and one is going to be action pack. I'm telling you this a young Kenoja Belgrave who plays his tennis in the Elite Row Tennis Academy, and Tyrico Brathwit, who plays right here in Belfield. You would say he have the home court advantage, John. You would say that to some degree. Good evening, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We have Tyrico Brathwick to my right. Give him a round of applause, please. Tyrico Brathwick. Uh, defeating Kanoja Belgrave on one occasion. And there are many matchups over the years. These young talents. Uh, we saw Tyrico Brathwick um, actually getting the better of uh, Belgrave in a shotgun village camp competition in 2023. This is the Sandy Lane Charitable One, Trust Irving Easter Love. Junior Competition 2024. And Two, on court, Irving we have uh, the finals of the boys, secondary book school boys, 11 to 14, uh, with Kanoja. Belgrave coming up against Tariko Brathwit. Kelvin, I think we have a very interesting matchup here with the finals of the boys 11 to 14. I'll tell you what, John. About two years ago, I played young uh, Kenoja Belgrave. As a matter of fact, in the presence of uh, the Minister of Sports and Empowerment, uh, Mr. Griffith, and he, he actually stopped the game and gave him a praise because this young Belgrave was playing some really good tennis. And now we are seeing a young man in building in terms of not just his structure, but the selection of his shots, uh, playing some excellent tennis. Uh, so with ball in hand, it's Tyreekor Brathwaite who heals from this area in Belfield and the other player on the right of your screen is Kenoja Belgrave and as I anticipated before John this game will have some shots in it as this age category seems to be pulling out some shots from last night at uh, Dover Terry Brathwaite he's a student at LZ school and uh, Kenoja Belgrave, uh, he's a student at the Parkinson School. And Belgrave won the primary school championships time and time again. And this is the first year he'll be stepping up in the secondary school boys category. And I'm sure that he'll be looking to crown here, to be crowned here this evening. And I'm telling you, a very uh, composed looking Brathwit. Uh, playing Seven on his home three. court uh, perhaps in the back of his mind he's saying Belgrave you're playing some good tennis but you're not beating me on my home court Seven I'll have this advantage five. but it's now a seven serving to five with Kenoja Belgrave with ball in hand and listening to some instructions uh, from his father Ken Belgrave a former Goal Hill footballer 
it, Sir Big Play. And in the seat as coach tonight, interestingly, is Darius Barakas Gaskin from Belfield. He's coaching Tyreek or Brathwaite. Brathwaite is known for his playing style of being able to keep the ball in play. Six, uh, he's not the biggest of attackers. And his opponent on the other hand, Belgrave, once the opportunity is there, he will certainly take it, Calvin. He's uh, all out a very complex pose young man in, in Belgrave he has all the shots he's a very good defensive player uh, re respectfully he was a champion for the primary school for the last three or so years and I'll, I'm quite sure that this evening we're going to see quite a bit of play from young Belgrave and I'll tell you this John a few years Thanks, ago the me, first man. time I saw Belgrave young Kenoja he was with his father Ken Belgrave and Ken was continuously training him from the forearm for almost an hour. And that's the type of training that you want to have as a row tennis player so that you'll be comfortable in your shot selection. But it's 9 serving to 9. Brathwick with ball in hand. And bunks in and looking extremely comfortable here. Nine serving I'm sure that Brathwick having one that Matt Chuck the last time these guys saw each other will be coming here with a level of confidence nonetheless that he can repeat and the score here is reflecting the um, good tennis here by Brathwit staying with the very flamboyant Belgrave uh, good work so far by Brathwit even score. Eleven serving twelve. Twelve all. Oh, very close indeed. And Belgrave having some variation in his serves. It shows his maturity in terms of a row tennis intelligence. Serving 13, serving 12, no serving to 13. What you can see here on screen is the crowd from Elite Row Tennis Academy. They're definitely healing for their young champ, Kenoja Belgrave. He happens to be the owner of this category for the last couple of years. Well, the primary school now he is into the secondary school. Brathwick with ball in hand. 14 serving 13. And he takes the lead after that bunk serve to the back arm of Belgrave. 14 all. And that's a very good shot on that occasion by Belgrave, showing that he is still very much in control, the attacker here of the, of the two. 15 serving 14. And I'll tell you this, John. Any ball at least 12 inches in the ear, Belgrave will hit. And as you mentioned before, uh, Brathwaite has a tendency to keep the ball on the court in a longer rallying style. Uh, but this young man, Kenoja Belgrave, is very, very confident in his shots. And he can hit from almost anywhere in the court. Yes, he can, but he's trailing by two points here this evening. With some very good tennis by Brathwaite. I'm keeping the ball on the court, giving his opponent that extra ball, and so far he's getting good rewards. 14, 16. 14, serving to 16. And will we have a change of guard as the expression 15, goes? 16. With Belgrave being victorious over Brathwit on a few occasions. Now Brathwaite holding his own, but it's 16, 16 serving to 16. 17, 16. In this 11 to 14 age category of the Sandy Lane all. Charitable Trust Easter Road Tennis Tournament 2024. Short ball in exchange oh, for a short ball. And that's a well-placed shot there from Belgrave to the delight of the crowd here in Belfield. 
Good setup. Very good finish by Belgrave. He gave him the injection, the slow ball, brought his opponent into the court and created opportunity for the opening and placed the ball up to perfection. Good stuff here by Belgrave. A 17 servant to 17. Uh, Belgrave will have the last serve at a natural game 17, in terms of the point system. So I'm sure he will want to make the best of that. And exchange for exchange. Uh, Brathlet, who heals from this area right here in Belfield, is showing Belgrave that I can do what you can do. It was not a shot of power, but placement 18, brilliantly placed by Brathwaite. Very brave attempt by Brathwaite, but that ball going wide beyond the restrictions on the court. It's a 21 by 10, and that one fell just outside the line, giving Belgrave game number one. I'm quite sure that that would do quite a bit for his confidence. But a good game number one by these two secondary four, 11 to 14 players and uh, Kevin your thoughts on game number one extremely close as we anticipated uh, Kinoja Belgrave winning uh, the last two or three times over Brathwit but Brathwit okay. has improved tremendously and what we just witnessed is a much closer game with that one finishing at 21-18 Belgrave beginning to bounce and catch a rhythm here. And Brathwit losing the first two serves. One serving two. And you can hear one of the, what we may consider the crowd coaches saying, stay down in there, meaning the back arm of Belgrave. Yes, we saw Belgrave actually work in the back arm of his opponent in game number one. Three, seven, two, one. Where the Three, percentage seven, two. of his short play was to the back arm of Brathwaite. Three, all. And I'll tell you, this is some intelligent road tennis from both youngsters as they select different areas of the court, of the court where they want to serve the ball. And again, some points. Yeah, that was a good shot by Belgrave. Center court, good power. And his opponent had no response. Five, seven, three. And now we are seeing a Belgrave looking to up the ante of his game in game number two. And you do not want to have a Belgrave on the opposite side of the court catching a rhythm. He will unleash some shots, but what a shot! Speaking of shots there uh, from Brathwaite, dissecting the court, extremely wide to the back arm there of Belgrave. Absolutely no answer. Yes, that was well played by Brathwaite. Still trailing. Six, seven. John, seven, you would realize that young Brathwaite is employing the center court serve the majority of times and gaining eight, a bit seven, of success. Seven. So it's extremely close right now. Eight serving to seven. The serve goes to young Kenoja Belgrave. Yes, both players seem to be struggling a bit with the ball in the center. And it's good to see that they're exploiting it as much as they possibly can. The, the left-right movement, the wider balls, both players agile enough to get to the ball. But the center court seems to be giving both of them a bit of, a bit of a challenge here this evening. But good, great, good tennis, very good tennis so far from these juniors. 
Nine serving seven. Nine serving to seven. Belgrave has gotten a bit taller. And Nine that's a beautiful seven. shot. But it's interesting to see that as he has gotten taller, he's now lowering his body uh, so that his center of gravity would be as such that he can strike the ball uh, from a low Nine. position. Eight. Ten now serving to eight. Another close game. Belgrave winning the first game, 21-18. Uh, and now it's 11 serving to 8. 9-11. Well, the serve's changing at 9-11. I'm sure Belgrave will want to keep his nose in front as he's looking to, to straight and clinch his victory once possible. And if you're now joining us, the first final, Niall Bushell won 21-18, 21-19 over Devontae Gill. And now we are into the second final, the 11-14 age group of this Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Tournament 2024. And some good exchanges here, John. Uh, from these youngsters, 10, no serving to 13. 11, 13. That's a very good form by Brathwit. Uh, but again, 14, equally 11, and up to the task is Belgrave. Uh, very good back arm down the line. 14, 12. 14 serving to 12 and the crowd here at Belfield, the home ground of Young Brathwit saying, let's go Tyreko. 15, but somehow Belgrave is showing his pedigree. He won the primary school tournament for the last couple of years and now he's into the secondary school. We can see his level of experience here as a youngster. And he's it's now 15 serving to 12. Maintaining the lead here, 16 12. 17 12. Oh, what a play! Good setup by Belgrave. I'm just about to say the same thing. Belgrave showing some intelligent selections in terms of his serve. Drawing out his opponent and then uh, creating that shot through the open space. Balls away. 14, 19. 15, 19. Uh, the clever shot by Brathwit taking the weight off on that particular back arm. Uh, getting some reward. 1916 service 1916 I'm surprised that Belgrave went for that particular shot selection as opposed to uh, playing a bit more conservatively but at least he has a three point lead so he can experiment a bit 2016 first match points at the Georgia Belgrave Belgrave just one point away but from being crowned the champion of the, the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior event. The secondary school boys ages 11 to 14 and he's a champion once again and he's a champion at a different level here this evening as he will be crowned in another category being crowned champion of the Premier School boys some time ago. He's now the champion of the boys 11 to 14. Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, um, CABC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc. and uh, the Road Tennis Sports Plus. I have with me the President of the Barbados Road Tennis Association, uh, Mr. Frederick Blunt. Good evening, Mr. Blunt. Good evening, Mr. Challender. Uh, what do you think about the exciting tennis you've been seeing so far? I'm very impressed. I like the, uh, the crowd. You know, the atmosphere is great and the standard is very, very high. 
Mr. Blunt, you became the president uh, just about two or so years ago. Uh, what inspired you and your organization to look at these junior tournaments? What was the insp where did the inspiration come from for you? The inspiration came from that when I look at the, the, the players in Barbados, majority of the players are over 40. We got like almost 85% of the players here over 40. Have 40. So I realized that we had to work on the development of the young players. So how do you feel about the success of the tournament uh, at this point of reaching the finals? I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. Every tournament that we have, we have more and more um, young, young players getting involved and the parents, parents are very excited as well. Uh, what about sharing with us some of those memorable moments and highlights um, for the tournament so far? How has that been? Yeah, some of the memorable moments is, is when, for me, is playing the tournament actually in Mainers in St. Peter, moving from the traditional areas in the, in the central areas and going to St. Peter. We also went to Silver Hill and in those our communities and also here at Bell, Bellfield. So it's more and then the atmosphere and the involvement of the, the parents as well. And how do you envision and what do you see the future of the junior rural tennis tournaments under your association and under your leadership? Well, well, the future is bright, but obviously we would like to get more and more children involved. But, but the future is very bright and things look very good going forward. Okay, Mr. Bland, I want to thank you for spending some time with me um, this evening. I'm quite sure that as the president, you have quite a other stuff here going on that you probably need to go and manage. But let me congratulate you and your team for a job well done so far. You're here in the finals night, and I'm quite sure that you're happy with what you've been seeing before and tonight yes, in particular. I'm, yes, I'm very happy. And to, to have the, a tournament like this for juniors being streamed live on CBC television, that, that is a great, that is a great fill up for rural tennis. And it will also allow the other children at home to want to get involved. Your daughter is here this evening. And she's in the finals. I want to leave you on that note. In regards to your daughter, what do you think about her her game this evening and who she's coming up against? Well, um, my daughter, I've played um, Miss Chua on a number of occasions. I think like 10, 10 occasions. So they have a very keen keen rivalry. rivalry. So we're looking for the best person to come out on top today. Okay, well, thank you, Six, seven, Mr. Blunt, four, for your time. And I want to wish you an enjoyable evening as you continue to be part of um, this very special Sandy Lane Charitable Junior Easter Tournament. All right, thank you very much. Pleasure. Seven serving four. So we're seven serving five. All the action as Renisha Stewart. The finals of the girls on the 16 on seven court. Serving six. Venetia Stewart, Stewart, seven. Her opponent in the Kezia Blunt, six. Seven all. Venetia Stewart, the defending champion of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament, having defeated Kezia seven Blunt all. in 2023. And I'm quite sure that Blunt has Eight, different seven. plans this evening. But we just have to see how this one pans out. So Blunt serving at eight all eight seven. That one a judge away. Nine eight. This is the Sandy Lane Charter Boat. Trust Easter eight. Junior Tournament 2024 uh, as we welcome uh, 11, uh, my core eight. commentator in Kelvin Bruce Willis Scott. Kelvin, welcome back to the action. Uh, we have two very talented young ladies here on court. Well, I wouldn't call my favorite, but I'm seeing Nine. some really 11, good tennis 17. in uh, this category. Uh, both students of uh, Springer Game Memorial. I wonder if they're going to speak to each other the whole way next week after this bout. MB 
Nine a serving to 11. Nine throw. With the serve. Ten, 12. A 10 no serving to 12. A very interesting serve there from Stuart. A point Ten, already 12. on that occasion. Interesting that uh, last night someone said that Young Blunt plays a joking form of tennis where she just puts on the ball. But my advice to them oh. is that with shots like that, she's not just playing a defensive style of tennis. She has what it takes uh, to place this ball wherever she wants to on the court. Yes, on that occasion, a very good form, good power. Um, her opponent really had no response. Uh, Kizia Blunt is here, having defeated Genesis Clark at 21-8, 21-12. And Renisha is here at the finals this evening, uh, having defeated Shani Seal, 21-11, 21-16. So it's 15 serving to 12. And Blunt accumulating her points uh, quite quickly. 16, 12. 16 now serving to 12. And young Kizia Blunt is always so calm and cool, John. Yes, her demeanor is so easygoing, uh, but she has an explosive side as well uh, when the opportunity is given. And she's the daughter of last year's finalist, Maudlin Blunt. And uh, they play the tennis right now in the sauna one of the two indoor road tennis facilities in barbados 14, 17. yes all the action and her dad the president of the barbados road tennis association 15, uh, frederick blunt i'm quite sure he's happy to see his daughter here this evening at the finalists yes and you interviewed him earlier uh, perhaps to get some of those nerves out of his body as he watches his daughter here uh, playing against Renisha Strutt. Well, Strutt not giving up. And we have a two-point difference with the players. Uh, I'm quite sure she'll be a bit disgusted with that last stroke. A ball that she could have done a lot better with. Yes, but we're seeing some... Now that is Renisha Strutt. Uh, term 24 hours ago, when she, opportunities were given, and she took them. And Stuart has improved tremendously over the last two years or so. Being much more confident with her shots. But there you have it. Kezia Blunt winning the first game. 21-16 over Young Stuart. We really didn't see the, the Stuart we saw last night. I mean, that more explosive kind of approach. Uh, we saw a more subtle uh, Stuart here this evening. Much to the benefit or to the advantage, I would say, to Blunt. Yeah. And Blunt really executed game number one brilliantly. And I'll tell you what I think is extremely interesting about this game. You have in the corner of Stuart, Barbados' number one, Kim Holder. And in the corner of Blunt, Love you have Maudlin Blunt, who these two individuals play Blunt each other on a regular basis. And now the younger ones are being coached by them. And this is good. This is good in terms of the advice and love serving, love. maturity that you need given the to these younger love folks. Serving one. Love now serving to one as Blunt won the first game 21-16 one, over four. Renisha Stewart. Oh, one, serving two. I'm sure that Stuart, having lost the first game, she would have got some instructions from her coach that she needs to probably up it Love a bit and, and take a bit more risk as it relates to some power shots. If she's going to Love take us four. into game number three here, the finals of the girls' four, 11 one. to 16 category. Four, seven, two. Stuart almost six feet in height. 
very tall indeed, has a very strong athletic background. I teased her and her mom last night at Dover, and I said, wait, young Renisha is getting taller. So perhaps she has to bend a bit lower now to execute certain shots, and she does. But that one Play going into the eight inch enemy, into the net. Yes, a ball, I'm quite sure from her reaction, she's disgusted as well. Um, she could have done a, a lot better on that occasion. Four. This game now, the cheer umpire is Aaron Barker. Five, all. So to five. Uh, Tamisha Stewart uh, plays her tennis at the Elite Road Tennis Academy. And uh, her opponent in uh, Kezia Blunt is from the sauna. Five, serving six. And five, you can hear seven. the voice of Kim Holder advising the young Stuart to just continue playing. Oftentimes, some players will stop playing thinking that the ball is out. And it's a good thing when they continue playing until the cheer umpire calls that final score. Yes, and on that occasion, we saw Stuart placing the ball to perfection. Um, no, no power, but well placed and clinching a point that she really will need um, if she's going to take us into game number three here this evening. Blunt mixing up the Nine serves. Serving Nine now serving to six. A Stuart with the lead, and we are seeing a bit of frustration there from Young Blunt. And Stuart is smiling. Yeah, she is happy. She's happy with this Nine lead. Uh, let's see if she can take it all the way to 21. And not only is she smiling because of the lead, but it's as though Nine she's taunting. Uh, young Blunt is now 10, serving to 7. Uh, that was a very good shot by Stuart. Um, takes you back to the shot where you would see play, being played by a Kim Holder. Um, she, hit that, she struck that ball in a very dismissive kind of manner. Um, happy to the, her coach's uh, satisfaction. I'm quite sure that Kim would have been impressed with that last put away. Certainly. And I'm sure that Kim Holder... Uh, sitting in the seat of young Stuart is grooming an attacker as she uh, for many years Ten, has been seven, attacking seven. and winning many tournaments across Barbados. Well, Stuart has um, a three point lead here. 10 serving seven. Uh, 10 now serving to seven. That was an excellent set up by Stuart, center court, giving her opponent that type of ball that she can only defensively return, and Stuart pounced on that one. Brilliant shot, well played by Stuart. And Stuart is beginning to oh, gain and some we're momentum. Seeing, we're seeing the attacking style of, of Stuart coming to the fore here this evening as she's looking to take this to best in three event uh, to a game number three once possible. Seven, seven, and I'll tell you what, John, it appears as though Stuart is putting a young Blunt under tremendous pressure. And Blunt is playing in the 11 to 16 age category, but she's relatively seasoned as a Eight, seven, junior. 13. And commits Cardinal Sin with that serve, trying to put that one down the line and going wide in her effort. Nine serving 13. Blunt will need to use her serve to close this gap if she can. Ten serving 13. Ten serving to 13. And Blunt pulling out. All of the experience here. 10, serving 14. It's 10 serving to 14. I would not want to make a prediction in this game, but based on the trajectory, I think Stroud is looking to uh, pull away this one and perhaps have a 14, game number three. 11. 
As you mentioned before, John. Yeah, she was going for a bit much. She came to paint an already painted line, and that one going to the favor of Blunt. 14, 12. Oh, this is good work by Blunt in closing the gap. Taking away those few attacking shots that we saw not long ago from Stewart. Uh, we are seeing Blunt placing the ball more to her back arm uh, to, to give that forearm a bit of a rest. 14, 13. 14, 7 to 13, a score that I'm quite sure a young Blunt would want at this juncture. 15, 13. Uh, trying to keep as close as possible to Stewart. Again, Stewart using the center court and again getting some rewards. Uh, serving the ball sent to court to her opponent. 14, oh, this is explosive 15. tennis. Explosive tennis by these two young ladies here, Kelvin. It was an exchange, a power shot, counter attack, and in the end, Stuart coming 14, up on top. 16. And I'll tell you, I remember a very tentative Stuart and now we are seeing a stroke who is so confident in terms of her shot selection. This is growth in this sport of road tennis. It is, but we saw Blunt in that exchange on Lishin as well. A good counter attack, good counter tennis by both ladies, both young girls. 15, 16. 15, a servant to 16 now. And Blunt in the back of her mind is saying, I don't want a third game. I won the first one, a 21-16, and I want to win the second one and avoid that deciding game. Well, she will need to use her serve 17, to create 16. every opportunity, and she's doing that at this time, uh, having won so far three out of three. 17, all. Stuart will have the opportunity to serve the last five serves. Unless we are pushed oh, beyond it. 18, 17, 17. And Strut will want to take advantage now of these five serves as she leads 18, 17. Uh, the smart thing to do would be to uh, serve at uh, some angles here and try to create some difficulty for Blunt. Well, she tried it there. 18, all. 18, oh. serving to 18. A football spiral out, she says she missed a penalty. That one was there for the taking, Kelvin. So perhaps she may just want to keep the ball on the court at this time. 18, And 19. Blunt takes the lead, though. Yes. With a Renisha Strutt with the serve now. Blunt two for two. Pressure building on Young Stewart here. Oh, what a response. 19, all. Uh, looks a lot like a, a Kim Holder response. Uh, you hit your way out of it. 19 all. 20, now it's 27 to 19. Game point to Renisha Stewart after losing the first one, 16 21. And yeah. here you have it. This Renisha this Stewart winning the second game, 21 19, in this Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Sorry, Easter Sarah, Junior Road Tennis up Tournament, 20 24. Calvin, a very good work here by these two young ladies fighting tooth and nail to be crowned here. Uh, the champion of the girls, secondary girls, 11 to 16. Uh, your thoughts on game number two, Kelvin? Well, I saw a very confident, you can see her sitting on the ground, um, blunt after winning the first game. But somehow, Renisha Stewart settled down. She took some good advice there from the experienced Kim Holder, and it worked for her. And she started to release her hand quite free, if I may say. And uh, she was quite expressive in her shots, gaining her the advantage there. 21-19 over Kezia Blunt. 
And in closing, Kelvin, we saw Sir using her serves. Uh, you, no, your thoughts Kelvin around Love, the use of a serve uh, by, by yeah, a player? Very, very important. I often tell people oh. I'm a C-class player, One. A-class serves. And whenever I'm in a difficult position, I use my serves to wiggle my way out. And we realize that Stuart employed the same strategy. Yes, yeah, in the game of road tennis, a player has five serves. Oh. Much uh, like table tennis of the past, the five serves. Three, love. We're into game number three. Three, one. A three serving to one. Interestingly, Strutt, after we the second game, uh, seemed oh. to be booming with confidence and somehow the, the momentum of Blunt, in my opinion, has dropped a bit. One. And these two players would have been playing each other regularly at the Elite Row Tennis Academy two, before five. Blunt made her move uh, to the sauna. Uh, so they would know each other's two, strengths and weaknesses. Six. And I'm sure that Stuart is looking to capitalize on any weakness uh, Three, that she would have six. known from before where Blunt is concerned. Six. Four. Game number three and Stewart has a two point lead, uh, six serving to four. Uh, after winning uh, four out of five of her serves to start game seven number three, four. she will now serve at seven serving to four. And uh, this is an interesting pendulum shift. I remember seeing Blunt attacking. Uh, Renisha Stewart over the years, but now you have a Renisha Stewart being coached by Kim Seven, Holder, five. and she all of a sudden now is an all out attacker. Very interesting okay. serve, Eight, and uh, she uses the serve uh, to create her shot. A very, very good build, build up. Yes, good work on that occasion, boy Stewart. Eight, five. Well done, 8 5. Nine five. Nine five, and you can see the confidence level here and Blunt dropping. And if I were her coach right now, modeling Blunt, I would be saying to her, stop the serve, compose yourself, and uh, try to get back into this game. But uh, what would you, what would you be saying to Stuart at this time? How Stuart. could she possibly have an answer uh, to that attacking style from Stuart? And now the players switch in this deciding game at 10. Well, Stuart switching with a score of 10, serving to 5. She has a cushion, a very good cushion for game at number 3. And she continues to, to create five more and more pressure. Um, the question is, can Blunt sustain the pressure that's being applied? Yes, it's all about the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust uh, Junior Tournament. Five, and what you are seeing here on your screen is the 11 to 16 age category. Kezia Blunt versus Renisha Stewart. Six, 11. And Renisha Stewart is the defending champion of uh, this Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament, seven, having defeated 11. Blunt. Having defeated Blunt in 2023. Seven, 11. And now we will be joined by the Honorable Charles Griffith, Minister of Youth sports and community empowerment good evening to you sir Eight, 11. well it's good to have you here in Belfield in Black Rock first of all welcome and we just have some questions to throw to you you are here watching this indigenous sport of road tennis what are your thoughts on the significance of hosting junior tournaments like this one for the development of sports at the grassroots level yeah, well, this, this is important. First of all, I want to thank the Sandy Lane Trust for sponsoring this tournament. Um, this is one of the ways that we will unearth new talent. Well, and you can see from the offering tonight that these youngsters are very, very 13, good um, in terms of the play. And it augurs well for the continuation of our indigenous sports, as you mentioned. Uh, I would love, love to see more tournaments 14, like this type nine. at the community level. 
because this is going to encourage more of our youngsters to be involved in the process. Definitely. But how do events like this, though, contribute to fostering a love for sports among young people? Yeah, well, I mean, if you look around, you will see adjacent to this tournament, a lot of youngsters are also on the hard court playing road tennis as well. We have been able to put down in excess of 300 court courts across the island. So it means that community now are involved in the process as well. So we are having a lot more youngsters at the community college um, level involved in the road tennis. Yes, I'm saying that for sure. Now, how does the government plan to further support initiatives like this one to ensure the continued growth and success of our indigenous sport of road tennis? Well, the government is doing a lot. If you um, look back at the last two years, we would have staged the, in the, the Barbados invitation. And we, we had in excess of 23 countries watching road tennis. The first time in the history of Barbados that any sport uh, would have generated that type of viewership. So we, we're doing what is necessary. We are now in the process of trying to have a document prepared to send to the um, IOC in relation to road tennis. We have three youngsters who are um, agreeing to be directors of the International Road Tennis Federation. So this is something that we're actively working on to ensure that um, we have all the rights in relation to the development of road tennis. Excellent. And, and what message do you have for the young athletes competing in today's tournament? But not just today's tournament, Mr. Griffith, but in future tournaments. Um, what I would say is to stay the distance. Only last month I launched the, road, the Government Road Tennis Academy at Benin where 26 youngsters were involved in that particular initiative and we're hoping to hone their skills there. Uh, eventually we want this to travel. Uh, I was just talking to a, a gentleman from Germany who's very very interested in having road tennis come to Germany. I know in Canada for example it has taken off and we are in like 200 schools in York and I believe that government will do everything that is necessary to ensure that we have longevity as it relates to road tennis. This is our indigenous sport. So government is doing everything to ensure that it, you know the survival is there. And from what I'm seeing tonight, the sport is in good hands. Definitely in good hands. Yes, and I'll tell you that I was privileged enough to do one of the presentations in Canada. And they're really liking the sport. Not just because it's the indigenous sport of Barbados, but because it lends so much in terms of exercising and, you know, the non-communicable diseases, etc. And, and wearing them off. Uh, but at this juncture, Mr. Griffith, we want to thank you uh, for your presence here and for all the wonderful work that you and the government have been doing for this indigenous sport of road tennis. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, so it's 18 serving to 20. And this is the final game, the deciding game in this boat here. And there you have it. Renisha Strutt coming away at victorious. A 21-18 over Kezia Blunt. And I'm telling you, John, that was a nail-biting finish there after Blunt won the first game, a 21-16. Strutt winning the second game, a 21-19. And the third game, a 21-18. Your thoughts, John, John Vic Chandler. The As you can see here in the crowd, uh, a crowd of jubilation. Yes. for this young athlete who hails from the Elite Road Tennis Academy. Share your thoughts. The expressions on the face of the young Renisha Stewart says it all. She was almost in tears and she celebrated with her teammates, her coach, and we can see a celebration for this to come. Uh, she's now crowned the champion of uh, the, again, of the secondary school girls 11 to 16. She came here as a defending champion and she defended well. And uh, she would walk away tonight as the queen again of the secondary girls 11 to 16. A crown she truly earned with some brilliant tennis when it was needed most. Well done to young Stuart.
Yes, so it's all about the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Tournament. You have just heard the words uh, from the Honorable Charles Griffith, Minister of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. And we have over 300 road tennis courts across Barbados. We know that the National Sports Council now, John, uh, has been working tremendously in terms of honing the talent of uh, these young road tennis players. And we can uh, definitely say that the future of road tennis is in good hands. Uh, talking about the future, I'm get coming on court. We are going to see Azari okay. Clark um, coming up against GL Graves. And this one will be the finals of the boys, age 15 to 17, right here at Belfield. Acknowledgement of the presence. Here we have the ambassador to Japan. The ambassador to Japan receiving a token from the president of uh, the Rotten Tennis Association, Mr. Frederick Blunt. Here we have it. Okay. As such an interesting design on both rackets uh, okay. representing the respective the countries. Fukushima ambassador to Barbados from Japan. I now hand you back to Mr. Ewan Parker, who will bring you this match between Azari Clark and Gia Graves in the 15 to 17 secondary boys so what you can see here on court in the pink pants is young Azari Clark and in the black pants GL Graves uh, the left-hander and uh, both play their row tennis in the sauna uh, but Clark uh, primarily playing his row tennis in the elite row tennis academy and his father Abby Clark will be coaching him tonight sitting in the chair and uh, I can tell you ladies and gentlemen this game here will have lots of shots the southpaw GL Graves advance in the semi-finals last night and also Azari Clark and now they're here in the finals of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Road Tennis Tournament 2024 and they're off look at how the first point was gained love a servant to one graves with the serve one all Graves making it to the finals for the very first time uh, and his opponent Azari Clark he's repeating being a finalist in the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament um, and he will be looking in 2024 for the crown uh, once it's there for the taking, I'm sure One, that Graves two. has alternative plans here this evening. So tonight we will crown a new champion One, of the boys, three. secondary boys, 15 to 17. And a bit later we'll have an interview from a young man, Nathan Agard, and he's the a software developer of something very interesting where road tennis is concerned so stay tuned for that but what an interesting cross-court shot there John yes Clark the type of player who has the ability to stay with points keeps the ball on the court and he also is a very good attacker and so Clark is one of those players who have everything going for him uh, he even has a dad who is very much behind him in every step he makes as he looks down the road of being a professional road tennis player. I spoke to him uh, a couple of days ago and he reiterated, John, I want to be a professional road tennis player. And I'm quite sure that events like this will certainly be opening a path for this young gentleman, this young yes. boy. 
And he defeated his brother Suave Clark last night at Dover. And I'll tell you something about this young man, Azari. He's full of confidence. And, you know, we were frolicking around last night about his ability and the ability of his brother. But what he has, though, is the mental fortitude in terms of staying in the game. As you can see, it's five serving to five. Well, six serving to five now as Graves uh, takes the lead in this first encounter. Six, four. Clark uh, Bedeck in his Seven, headband six. and matching pants. And GL Graves not to be written off at all. Uh, he's a player who's been putting in his work in the sauna over the last two or so years and his game keeps going from strength to strength. And let's see if tonight he can bring his A game here and be crowned uh, champion of uh, this event. Oh, what a play again. Seven, the quality seven. of tennis uh, by these juniors is really of a high standard, Kelvin. Yes, and young Clark uh, setting up that shot quite nicely, uh, going to the forearm twice and then through the back arm. But seven, Graves is seven, here eight. saying, do for do, I can do. Yes, a very good inside out forearm by Graves. Good setup. The ball gave him a favorable bounce. And he was able to put that one away uh, from his opponent. Graves would have advanced to the finals having defeated Raheem Nurse 16-21, 22-20, 21-16. And uh, Clark defeating his brother, Suave Clark, 21-19, 21-10. Eight servant to eight. You can hear the... A loud cries from Abby Clark, father and coach of Azari Clark. It's only eight all, John, but uh, he's very happy Nine, to see that his son is staying in line in terms of the points. Yes, another good rally by both players. Nine all. Nine all, and Young Graves has gotten a bit taller as well, as you can see uh, from last year, if you remember. And he's covering the court quite well. This 21 by 10 space right here. Look at the movement though of Young Clark as he bounces, he moves, he covers the court. Same can be said for Graves, who's very determined. It spoke to him last night. And he said, John Wick, I'm here to win. And so far, he looks very much in gear here this evening he's moving well and staying ten, very close to his ten. opponent even score at 10 apiece as we have uh, that towel break and maybe some instructions on the side kelvin yes so we're seeing both players in this 10 to 15 second break that they're allowed speaking to their coaches and that's a smart strategy in terms of the redirection that a player needs to be back in the game. And I'll tell you the importance of a coach, John. Uh, sometimes you're playing and you're Nine. off your game oh. and you really need a coach to kind of steer you back into the game. 11, 10. 11, seven to 10. This is gonna be a close encounter. It's very hard to call this oh, one, what but a what a shot. And I'm sure John, John that Vic Chandler, a left-hander, Loves that cross court shot. Tell us a bit about that shot, oh, John. I'm quite pleased. I'm impressed with the placement, the pace, and the response. Well done by Graves. And if you were alive last night listening to us, you would hear a discussion between John and myself as it relates to the left-hander and right-hander of this sport. And what may very well be viewed as a difficult shot for a right-hander Maybe a bit easier for a left-hander like that particular serve, uh, dissecting the court just over the net. 11, this is very focused and di direct tennis here being played uh, by, by Graves. He looks as if he has a plan. He's taking his instructions, but he's staying to his plan. He's creating some pressure on Clark. I believe more than Clark expected coming here this evening. I'll tell you. Uh, Clark has been playing 11, uh, some really, really 14, good tennis. 
but um, I believe he's shocked, as you said, to see that Graves is not just matching him, uh, but he has a lead on him right now. Giving him something to think about. Well, <laughs> and he, he got that point and he showed it good. A very f flamboyant player, uh, this young Clark. Oh, what a play again by Graves, giving his opponent that extra ball. And uh, we're seeing some on force errors creeping into the game of Azari Clark here this evening. Maybe feeling some pressure. We are in the final stage. And is he feeling the pressures of finals? And that would be surprising. I'll tell you, John, that he has a, a large cadre of shots. As you can see, he's picking them oh, so nicely. But Jill is uh, defending extremely well. A 13 and no serving to 15 uh, to the delight of the crowd here at Belfield. And they're just moving around this ball so nicely. Uh, this ball is sponsored by the Road Tennis Sports Plus. Excellent work here by Clark. Fifteen, all 15 serving to 15, just as anticipated. A very close game between GL Graves and Azari Clark. Yes, Clark using every tactic in the book. At this point, he's very much focused on the back arm of his opponent and was able to win two consecutive points. And we have even score now at 15 apiece. And game at number one. Jill Graves with some sports tape around his right knee. But he's not playing as though he has any type of injury at all. And we can hear the noise uh, from the crowd of the Elite Road Tennis Academy where young Clark plays his road tennis. 16, 17. A good change of serve by Graves. And it's really interesting, John, to see each player rejoicing after just one point because they both know oh. how close this game would be. 17 now serving uh, to 17. This is good work here by Graves, creating, maintaining, keeping the pressure on his opponent. Well, Clark has the last serve. And depending on how this 17, one goes, 18. well, it's now 17 serving to 18 with Clark uh, having the last serve, a ball in hand. And it goes over to his father, a former Barbados a table tennis player, Abby Clark. And he's instructing him as to perhaps how to use these last five serves John what would you be telling him were you in this position right now it's your serve is important that we use the serve tactically mix the serves 18 all 18 serving to 18 you would realize that it was a center court serve and these center court serves can create a lot of difficulty for the left-handers and somehow perhaps you see the adjustment there from Graves uh, for that particular serve it had him a bit uh, confused perhaps that's what his father Abby Clark was telling young Azari well we had a score at 10 all the first half and now the score is 18 all we're into the second half um, three quarter way in this game number one that's been very exciting so far with Clark serving at this point and i'm sure that clark would want to use every tactic in the book and most importantly to serve if he's going to take game number one he's one of one he, in the world tennis a server means. has five serves oh. uh, let's see what he does with his five Mm 
1918. A very good change of attack. Different approach here by Clark. Two to two. Oh, what a play. What a shot there by Clark. And that's what special and good players do. Dig deep and find solutions. And Clark here is working on his solution. Point to be replayed at 19. 19 all. 19 servant to 19, John. Yeah, that ball in was a judge. This first encounter. Play. Extremely close from the beginning. Clark, one point away from claiming game number one. And he does with style. 21 19 as Azari Clark takes game number one. He was under severe pressure. A game that went. All the way to 18 all. Kelvin, what a first game by these two talents, two very gifted future players of raw tennis. Well, John, we called it and we were absolutely correct. We saw them last night at Dover in the semifinals and uh, based on love how they were playing, love. we knew that this was going to be a close game. And uh, congrats to Azari Clark for winning that one, 21-19. And now we're into the second encounter. One, love. And that switch in pace and direction produced a lot of trouble there for Young Graves. Yes, very good composure. Good strategy by Clark love. when it mattered most. He was able to use his serve to take game number one. And he's now serving two. at two. Love. Serving to love. Three. Love. Oh, the Three excitement. Love. The excitement, the expressions by young Clark. Very confident looking Clark as well in his shot selection. No reservation at all. He's hitting when he needs to hit. Well, that one into the net, but I'm sure it will not take away from his confidence level. It's now three serving to one. If you've now joined us, Azari Clark won the first game, a 21-19. And now we are into the second game in this uh, Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament uh, 2024. Three, and the category is the 15 to 17 boys. And it's all happening thanks to our sponsors, Sandy Lane one, Charitable three, Trust, CIBC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc. and Aurora Tennis Sports Plus. Two, four. A two servant to four. Two, five. And uh, somehow the shot selection of Graves uh, seemed to be letting him down. Perhaps he just needs to keep the ball on the court Three, five. as opposed to uh, trying to bully. Uh, the court, as the expression goes. Uh, his, his opponent certainly will not, is not the type of player that you can bully. Uh, you have to work your way cleverly um, around young Clark. He has just about all the tools you can think about in the sport of raw tennis. Four, five. Good Four work here by Graves. Six, four. So Calvin with the over 200 rotten courts in Barbados, 
where can we find Calvin Bushwell Scott? Um, taking a his game of world tennis. Well, no other place than a tennis town in Warrens, and of course, uh, there's another court called Tennis City in Ashford in St. Thomas. But John, there are actually over 300 Seven, courts five. in Barbados. And uh, tomorrow, if everything works so well, I will be in Queens, New York, with the New York Massive, the diaspora, who play a road tennis down there. Seven, six. Uh, this game of road tennis continues to spread across the world. Oh, this Ooh. is great. Good tennis here again by both players. Graves on the attack and his opponent showing that he, Clark, has defense as well. Very good defensive tennis by Clark. Graves will serve at 6-8. Six, 6-7-8 six, after his tower break. In row tennis, a player had 15 seconds uh, for a tower break. Uh, correction, Clark serving 8-6. And then somehow both seven, players seven, uh, continuously hitting the ball into the net, misjudging their shots. And we can hear a supporter saying to young Jill Graves, put the ball on the blue. Just keep it in. Don't try anything too extravagant. Oh, it's really good to see the support for road tennis here. Locally, we're here at Belfield, at seven, the Belfield seven, Road eight, Tennis Facility. Very good crowd on hand to take in these finals of these juniors at various categories and on court we are presently seeing the junior the secondary school boys aged 15 to 17. nine serving eight nine no serving to eight Graves losing the first game in 19-21, but he takes a two-point lead over Young Clark. Good work again here by Graves. Uh, he's creating some space, a three-point difference now, serving at 11-8. Eight serving to twelve. And the, the response from his opponent, believing that one had gone beyond the court. It was a close beyond, call. But, but we end. will respect the call of cheer umpire, uh, Mr. Aaron Barker, former uh, table tennis player of Barbados as well, interestingly. Nine oh serving to twelve. Uh, we can hear the cheers from uh, the Elite Row Tennis Academy, a very big row tennis academy here in Barbados. And one of their players is currently playing Azari Clark. Is that player? And young Jill Graves, he plays the majority of his tennis in the place called the Sauna in Bank Hall. And for our viewers, those who may be wondering, what's this on my television this evening? Uh, this is uh, the finals of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament and the, the indigenous sport of Barbados Road Tennis that has been around uh, almost 100 years. And uh, here we are this evening taking in all the action at the junior level. So it's good to see Road Tennis remaining alive and well over the years and earlier we heard from the minister himself in terms of the many plans that they have for this game of road tennis and hopefully someday we will see this game of road tennis on the international screen as big as the olympics john yes that's the that's the vision that's the plan and we are seeing some juniors on court this evening and we truly hope that they are going to be recipients of the future players who would benefit from such. 14, 13. So One point now, lead. Uh, joining us, my name is Kelvin Bruce Willis-Scott 
And with me is my co-commentator, John, John Wick Chandler. And together we are the G-Line Raw Tennis Team. And we are bringing you live action here uh, from the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. Thanks uh, to our sponsors, uh, Sandy Lane Charitable 14, Trust, 15. the CABC Caribbean, Athletes Foot Store, Jeans Inc., and of course, Row Tennis Sports Plus. And the court in the pink pants is uh, Zari Clark, and in the black shorts is GL Graves, 15, with a Zari, court, a, a Zari Clark rather winning the first game of 21-19. And now it's 15 all in the second game. Very close encounter with Clark. Setting up a point really well. And in the final analysis, finding the each enemy. Uh, the, the nets in the road Bear tennis. The H, 15 eight inches in height. And we call it the H enemy. Even score, 15 all. Fifteen, sixteen. Fifteen serving to sixteen. We can see some pressure here mounting up on Clark. Doesn't look as confident 16. as before oh. in his shot selection. But it's sixteen serving to sixteen. Nonetheless, even score. Oh. Seventeen, sixteen. Good change of pace uh, by Clark. Where is a bit early into his shot. Uh, 17 with no serve to 16. 18, 16. It is said, when under pressure, test the forearm on the serve. All the way. 17, 18, serve machine. In game number one, we saw Clark using his serve to get over the line. We're into game number two. Can Grave use his serve to get over the line? Well, I'm quite sure that his coach, Antonio, is telling him, well, you have the serves now. You are one point behind. But if you win all, you can win this game 21-18. Worst case scenario, 21-19. He needs four. That's the target number four. It will take us into game number three. He has one. Eighteen all. Eighteen. Nineteen. And that's a very good shot by Clark. Increased pace, a bit more power through his opponent's back arm. Graves beginning to play a bit tentative now. 18, 20, there you have it. Graves feeling the pressure indeed. Uh, that forearm, he really would be disgusted uh, in the manner in which he played that last shot. 18, 7 to 20. And Azari Clark has done it. He's now the champion of the, the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. He evaded him in 2023 uh, when he lost in the finals to Raheem Nurse. He's here tonight and he's done what he always wanted to do. That is the crown champion of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament. Congratulations to young Clark on a job very, very well done. Celebration around the team supporting young Azari Clark, the Elite Academy on a job well done. But Kelvin, he was under some pressure. It was a very close game between these two young future talents of the game of raw tennis. 
Uh, how did you see it? Well, we, we knew it would have been a close game and I'll tell you that at 21-19, 21-18, Clark has a lot to be thankful for and to be happy, but he cannot go away saying that it was a walkover at all. Uh, young Jill Graves played extremely well. And speaking of the Elite Rotanis Academy, we now have young Tyrese Holder in the, the senior boys, 18 to 21. And he's going to be playing another young man from the sauna in Shaquem Nurse. And this should be a very interesting matchup, as you can see uh, both of them on your screens. Uh, but going back to that game, John, that was some very interesting tennis with both players attacking uh, from pretty much the inception to the end, uh, showing their comfort in terms of their shot selection. But they always say that the great players find a way to win. And uh, this evening, uh, what we saw uh, from a, a future great, I'm going to give him a lot of kudos. This is young Azari Clark. The quality of tennis that he's been displaying over the last couple of years. Continue to see him in a place special. Uh, when you look at the, the, the other youngsters around, they're all very good players, but there's something really special about young Azari Clark. And I'm sure that should he continue on this path, um, he will certainly be, be a household name in raw tennis. And now we have a young man, Nathan Agard. He is the software developer uh, for a special software in relation to road tennis. And we're going to ask him a few questions. The commentary box. Uh, first of all, Mr. Agard, good night. Welcome. Hey, good night. Nice to meet you. Now, what inspired you to create this scoring software specifically for road tennis tournaments? Well, we wanted to create software where we can collect scores and analytics um, to, so we can have stats for the sport, especially in the area of coaching, because we can only get on to the global stage if we have data and uh, analytics, you know, in this day and age that, you know, we can work off of. And, and that's very, very impressive. Uh, uh, John, John Wick Chandler and myself over uh, the last two or so years, we would, be, we would have been writing everything down but now we're happy to see that somebody's yeah, compiled yeah. all of this information <laughs> and will make life easier for us. Now, what is the key in terms of the features of your scoring software that make it beneficial for both organizers and participants? Well, for participants, um, I noticed over there they are taking the scores, you know, the old fashioned way, you know, where they have the flip cards and stuff, you know. For the guys over there, that's fine, but for the crowd that we have over here on this side, it's going to be you know, quite hard for them to see. So when we have our scores and let it sit live on the screen itself, you know, we can expand it, you know, we can make it as big as we want, as small as we want. But for the audience themselves, it'll be a lot easier for them to see and understand the sport. Also, we also have the software set in such a way that you can actually see who is serving at a particular time, and we also have the names of the players. So as we collect our, analytic, uh, our analytics and build our data, we also plan on building you know, a very large database of all the players on island, all the players on island. That way, as people are actually seeing, you know, because everyone here may not know exactly, you know, who is playing, but on the screen itself, they can actually see, you know, um, who's actually playing, you know, on the court and where and when. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the this is the final match of the night. We in terms of our stakeholders, right. um, like Please I said, in this day and age, you know, the sport can only be Up as great as we, you know, a lot of and with more data, you know, the sport, there's a lot more possibilities of the sport, both locally, regionally, and globally as well. So as we build, um, before, so we build our software and build on the data that we have, we, we build that and the sport to a global stage. Yes, and, and finally, we know that accuracy and reliability is a major thing. One, now, how love. do you ensure accuracy and reliability in the scoring process with your software? Right, so currently how we have the software set at this particular stage or iteration, the yeah, scores man. and data is entered manually on the screen. However, we plan to utilize artificial intelligence, which is you know a big you know booming name you know globally. And what that'll do is yeah, it'll train a custom artificial intelligence model that actually analyze the sport live, like through cameras and computer vision and all that kind of stuff, and actually do the scoring automatically. So, it, you know, it'll go beyond just a simple person there, you know, saying nobody's screen or saying saying nobody flip cards, taking scores. The actual computer and the artificial intelligence will be able to do all that automatically. 
Well, I'll tell you, that takes away a lot of the manpower and makes things extremely easy, not just here for us in the commentary yeah. box, but obviously for the individuals at home uh, watching it. Uh, so, so when do you envision all of this will be finished in terms of the final product? In terms of the final product, I would say it's um, a work in progress. I would say about a few months, let, let, let's say a, a few months to, let's say, early early next year. I would say we can have something like really, really rolling. Um, you know, that the public and the orders can actually see and utilize. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Eargard, and I'll tell you, I am eagerly anticipating the completion of this to make our work easier. So yeah. thank you and all the best in your future endeavors. Well, thanks. Okay. So on screen, we have a young Shaquem Nurse and, of course, a Tyrese Holder. And this is the final of the finals in uh, the 18 to 21 category. The final match of the night in this Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Row Tennis Tournament five 2024 six. is five serving to six. A very close game here with these uh, two senior boys. Tyree Soler, the taller of the two, with ball in hand. Six, all. Serving uh, towards Nurse. I'm sure as Mr. Eagard resumes his position, you'll be seeing the score on the screen shortly. But in the interim, Six, eight. It's uh, Tyrese Holder, six, and uh, Shaquem Nurse, eight. And there you have it. Good exchange of shots uh, between these two individuals. And uh, that shot eight, just seven, away. Seven. So it's eight serving to seven as we welcome back uh, John, uh, John Wick Chandler. Oh, all the action, all the action. Very close indeed, uh, Calvin. We did anticipate a close game. And this one can go anywhere. Oh, and speaking my of going anywhere, what a play. I'll tell you, that's a, an extremely exciting shot there from a young Shaquem a nurse uh, some uh, dubbing him uh, the young Anton Lilman Daniel uh, just about two fact. years ago he had a wonder boy name as well he did extremely well uh, last year in the men's open uh, but uh, there you go uh, Tyrese Holder is saying you are not the only one with shots yes very well played uh, uh, by Holder Good power shot. Excellent stuff. It's going to be a shot for shot night. What a play here again by Nurse. Showing why he is the number John. two in the world. Lots of individuals came here to see the other matches, but I can tell you that this is going to be a very exciting match as it relates to the shots and shot selections from both players. Tyrese Holder with ball in hand. Ten, 11. 10 no serving to 11. Nera's having the advantage in the matchups and Holder looking to see if he can tonight walk away victorious uh, but he's going through the number two player in the world in Shaquem Nurse Ten, 13 10 no servant to 13 a very good switch uh, by Nurse, uh, with some heavy weight on that form through his opponent's ten, form, thirteen. and that ball going, and that point going in the favor of Nurse. Ten will now serve to thirteen. Eleven. 
11, 13. Nurse looking to repeat. And he's definitely using all kind of tactics here this evening. Looking for every opportunity to attack the ball. But good work so far by Holder. Who's staying very close indeed. 13, 12, service change. And the one time that Holder defeated Shaquem Nurse. It was a big jubilation in the camp of the Elite Road Tennis Academy. Understandably so. That's a powerful shot uh, from the forearm of Nurse. Uh, piercing uh, the racket of Holder. In this first game of the final finals. You can hear 14, support coming from Abby Clark, a member of the Elite Road Tennis Academy team. And sitting in the chair, we have Francisco Lewis, 14, uh, giving some coaching instructions to Tyrese Holler. 14, 15, Very uncontrolled shot from Nurse. Yes, for some reason, Nurse is playing one minute he's in it, next minute he's out. He's, he's not very steady um, the way he's been playing tennis. Last night we saw in the semifinals, um, he's losing a game to Young Lane. And you ask the question, how? Why? And, and this evening, if he brings that same kind of mindset to, to the finals, I think he's going to get a surprise here this evening. Holder is here to win, and he's playing really well. He has a two-point lead, and let's see if he's able to capitalize on this lead at this point. Yes, and I'll tell you that there is a lack of consistency of recent times in Nurse. 17, 14. And it's now 17, 7 to 14. And Holder takes a very interesting three-point lead here in this first game. Not sure if Nurse will want Holder uh, to win this first game in terms of the pressure that can be mounted up against 17, him. 17-15. Uh, that ball uh, just being on the outer end of the court. And the court is only 21, 21 by 10. There's no more room um, in the end. No more room in the end. The, the court size has been etched, sketched, and is there. 21 by 10 in row tennis. 17, uh, that's the size of the row tennis court. 17 now serving to 16 and the game has become extremely close and interesting and you're talking about interesting and is, is these moments that we see the shakim nurse uh, the wonder boy comes to the rescue and uh, what a shot on uh, that occasion and uh, the ball is being a judge away and i'll tell you that after Nurse hit that ball, he dropped his yeah, racket and walk away in excitement. Uh, but the kind of play you will see from some of the more mature players in the sport, our player like Lloyd Dean, known as the Sour, comes to mind. He, he strikes the ball with great force occasionally, and when he's sure he has what he wanted, he drops the racket. Let um, me say a good evening to Lloyd Dean. Seventeen, all. Seventeen, serving to seventeen. Nurse will have the final 18, serve. Seventeen. He has the last serve, and he's up by one point. I'm quite sure he'd be looking to close here uh, with his serves if he 19, can. Nineteen, seventeen. Twenty now serving to seventeen, and Nurse looking to capitalize on his serves. 
in at 17 to Shaquem 21 Nurse. 17, there you have it. Uh, Shaquem Nurse uh, defeating uh, Tyrese Holder. Uh, 21 17 in uh, the first game of uh, the senior boys, 18 to 21, in this Sandy Lane uh, Charitable Trust Easter uh, Junior Road Tennis Tournament 20 uh, 24. Your take, John. Oh, well, this was good first game. right entertaining much to the appreciation of the crowd here at Belfield who came here this evening looking forward to some exciting tennis and I'm quite sure at the end of game number one uh, they both time to pay and come again and the quality of tennis displayed by both players holder and nurse was certainly very very entertaining and of a high level and Shaquem with his racket Marked number one. But will he be the number one here in this Shaquem senior boys 18 to 21 division? Shaquem. We shall see. Love yeah, love. what I thought in game number one, it was the way the manner in which he closed the game, serving at 18 17. Neres was able to, to win all three love of one. his serves quite comfortably. One, all. One, two. And in that first game, it was extremely close. Two, all. With Nurse just pulling away at the end. Two, serving three. Two serving four. Two no serving to four. It's going to take a really big effort here on the part of Holder uh, if he's going to take this into game number three in the manner in which we saw Nurse closed three, on game four. one. Three will now serve to four. Three, five. And all the action thanks to our sponsors in Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, CIBC Caribbean, Athlete Foot Store, Jeans Inc., and Road Tennis Sports Plus. Four, five. I can tell you, John, that. Nurse is not looking to give away this lead so easily. Nice injection. Now that's when you have, that's when you're over six feet, Calvin. With height like that, what a way to use it. Well done uh, by Holder. Good defensive tennis. Ball's a sharp person like myself or you, Calvin. We wouldn't get that. Not with our reach. Five. Our reach is too short. Way too short. Maybe our ac acceleration as well. Oh, power oh, hitting here. That shot from po Nurse. Power hitting here by Nurse uh, through the back arm of Holder, who had no replay. Ooh, spoiling that one. A very easy shot, it would appear. Oh. Yeah, finding the enemy. Oh, Penalty given away. And if Nurse is not careful, Holder can take the lead. His momentum is dropping tremendously. Six. Showing a bit of inconsistency in terms of his confidence. Six. There you have it again. Nurse is here in the finals, having defeated Devontae Lane 21 11, 21 23. 21 17 and holder is here in the finals this evening having defeated mosai williams 21 19 21 17 and we're into the second game of this two best in three final eight seven service change It's 
on. Nine, seven. So nine, seven to seven. Two point lead by Holder. Nine, eight. It's important that Holder that keeps his nose in front here. Eight. On force error by Nurse. Much to the benefit of Holder. Are we going to get a third Eleven, game? That's eight. the question now. It's, it's a good question at this point. On the minds of the viewers and the audience here at Belfield and Black Rock. Uh, it's really difficult to root the Wonder Boy with a three point difference. I'm not at this point daring to call it in anyone's favor, at least more so Holder. Uh, but I'm quite sure that Holder has the tennis, that once he stays on his path, he may get that magic number of 21 11, before his opponent. Eight. Been seeing a mixed approach in this tournament by Nurse. 9-11. Ball easy put away. No pressure on Nurse. And he will now serve at 9-11. 9-12. Nine no serving to twelve. As a holder is looking to maintain this lead. Ten, twelve. Very good form by Nurse. Oh, that's a good power ten, hitting 13. by Nurse. Good defensive tennis by Holder. Ten thirteen. Nero's looking to paint an already painted line and that one much to the appreciation of his opponent at 10 will serve now to 14 as the lead builds. 14, 11. Some more shouting serve. Slow. Yes, instructions <laughs> come in from all directions for a holder as he takes a towel break. He will return, served at 14 11. I'm sure that he, those instructions 14, given 11. will be let's ensure it is not a service break in any form. 14, 12. Oh, what another explosive form by Nurse through the back arm of Holder, uh, who really had no response. Good stuff here by Nurse as he seeks to close the gap. 14, oh, shot. that is a Anna shot pulls. of class. And he, he, he felt 13. it to the point that he posed on it as well. Um, brilliance by Nurse. Some fans have wondered if uh, Shaki uh, sometimes give away points uh, so as to trail and then come and take back the lead in terms of his own little fantasy and excitement. As we are seeing here, it's 14 all. 15, 14. But he already achieved the mini break, having won three out of the five serves by Holder. And what, what a time for a mini break. Uh, four out of five. I'm sure that Nurse would not want to be spoiling easy balls like this at 15 all but now 15, it's 15, 15 7 to 16 I'm sure this large crowd here at Belfield definitely looking forward to 15, a third game all. but let's see 
after Shaquem Nurse won the first game. 21-17. That's oh. a good defense there from Holder. Yes. Well and done by Holder. Nurse had an open court to just place the ball, but he opted for power and it worked against him. Yes, it's important that Holder come up with shots of that sort if he's going to take this into a game number three. And he has done well. He's keeping very close. Even scored 17 all. Um, Holder will get the opportunity to serve the last five serves. And okay. let's see if those serves can get him where he's heading here this evening. Hopefully for game number three. And I'm really surprised to see yeah, that in the coaching cheer of the Barbados is number two, Shaquem Nurse. He has a young man, Zaya Moore as opposed to perhaps one of the older coaches from the sauna where he plays his row tennis. Well, we're seeing a total opposite for Holder as he's taking some instructions from none other than Frank Francisco Lewis, uh, the head coach and the man behind the Elite Row Tennis Academy. And all the action here, Thanks to our sponsors in Sandy Lane Charitable Trust, CABC Caribbean, Athlete's Foot Store, Jeans Inc. and the Road Tennis Sports Plus. Score 17 will serve to 17. Seventeen, eighteen. Seventeen serve it to eighteen. A holder with the final serve. Serving to stay in this game and push it 17, to a third 19. if possible. Seventeen, nineteen. Eighteen, nineteen. Oh, Holder looking for too much on, on that occasion. Will no serve at 18 20. Nurse one point away. 19 serving to 20. The nurse just looking to walk through that door and be the a champion of the senior boys division 18 to 21. 20. It would be a third consecutive year being crowned champion of the senior boys. He's a very decorated young talent. Shaquem Wonderboy Nurse shows up tonight and once again claims the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. Three consecutive crowns in a row. Well done to Shaquem Wonderboy Nurse. Exciting game. I was not expecting a two straight, to be honest with you. But uh, there you have it. Uh, Shaquem Nurse, congratulations to him in uh, defeating Tyrese Holder 21 17, 21 uh, 19. us here and join us for the coverage of this Sandy Leon Charitable Trust Easter Junior Tournament 2024. We look forward to seeing you soon.
officials help put the crisis out. They want players to assemble from the primary school girls, primary school boys, from fourth to fourth place.